swings the bat. And Koufax with a new ball takes a hitch at his belt and walks behind the mound. I would think that the mound at Dodger Stadium right now is the loneliest place in the world. Sandy fussing. Looks in to get his sign. 0 and 2 to Amalfitano. The strike two pitch to Joe. Fastball swung on and missed. Strike three. He is one out away from the promised land. And Harvey Keen is coming up. is batting for Bob Henley. The time on the scoreboard is 9.44. The date, September the 9th, 1965. And Koufax working on veteran Harvey Keen. Sandy into his windup, and the pitch, a fastball for a strike. He has struck out, by the way, five consecutive batters. And that's gone unnoticed. Sandy ready in the strike one pitch. Very high, and he lost his hat. He really forced that one. That's only the second time tonight where I have had the feeling that Sandy threw instead of pitch, trying to get that little extra. And that time, he tried so hard, his hat fell off. He took an extremely long stride to the plate, and Torborg had to go up to get it. One and one to Harvey Keen. Now he's ready. Fastball high. Ball two. You can't blame a man for pushing just a little bit now. Sandy backs off, mops his forehead, runs his left index finger along his forehead, dries it off on his left pants leg. All the while, Keen just waiting. Now Sandy looks in. Into his windup and the 2-1 pitch to Keen. Swung on and missed. Strike two. It is 9.46 p.m. Two and two to Harvey Keen. One strike away. Sandy into his windup. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed the perfect game. Field. It is 9.46 p.m. in the city of the Angels, Los Angeles, California. And a crowd of 29,139. Just sitting in to see the only pitcher in baseball history to hurl four no-hit, no-run games. He has done it four straight years, and now he capped it on his fourth no-hitter. He made it a perfect game. And Sandy Koufax, whose name will always remind you of strikeouts, did it with a flourish. He struck out the last six consecutive batters. So when he wrote his name in capital letters in the record books, that K stands out even more than the O-U-F-A-X. Blake's the major leagues. Well, there's never been better poetry in motion on the air than this call. And in 1995, we asked Vince Scully... Uh, to find out why he called the time in that broadcast, why he called the time every minute as the perfect game reached its climax. Every time I do a game that's a potential no-hitter, when it comes to the ninth inning, uh, the engineer in the studio automatically records the ninth inning. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's a Dodger or not, because if it's the opposition, we give him the tape. So he has it uh, for the rest of his life. Dennis Martinez, for instance, uh, he has the tape of his ninth inning when he pitched the perfect game against the Dodgers. Anyway, Sandy Kovac had already pitched three no-hitters. And when I do the tape of a guy who's pitching a no-hitter, for his benefit only, 
I always put the date on the tape. So that 30 years from now, when he's playing it for his grandchildren, he will hear that on July so-and-so, 19th something. So I do that as a matter of course. Well, now I've done that three times for Sandy Kopak. So as we were coming to the ninth inning, I wasn't so wrapped up in the perfect game and all of that drama as I was thinking, what could I do to make this a little extra special in case Sandy does it? And for some reason, I will never know why, because it means nothing to a baseball game, I started to give the time. And so as he walked out to the mound, I'm saying, and so at 9.48 p.m. on this da, 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 1965 at Dodger Stadium, Sandy Koufax, and then as each out was recorded, I would give the time, only thinking that this will be fun for Sandy to have 30 years from now, 40 years from now. Well, when the game ended, the next day, the one thing everybody talked about was how dramatic it was that I was giving the time, thinking I had this great sense of theater, when all the while, all I was trying to do was uh, give Sandy a little something extra for the tape. <laughs> Well, Costello, I'm going to New York with you. You know, Bucky Harris, the Yanks manager, gave me a job as coach for as long as you're on the team. Look, Habit, if you're the coach, you must know all the players. I certainly do. Well, you know, I, mean, I never met the guys, so you'll have to tell me their names, and then I'll know who's playing on the team. Oh, I'll, I'll tell you their names, but you know, strange it may seem, they give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. You mean funny names? Strange names, pet names, like Dizzy Dean and... His brother Daffy. Daffy Dean. I'm their French cousin. French? Gouffet. Gouffet Dean, oh, I see. <laughs> well, let's see, we have on the bags, we have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find I out. I say, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know who's on third. Are you the manager? Yes. You're going to be the coach, too? Yes. And you know the fellow's name? Well, I should. Well, then who's on first? Yes. I mean, the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first base. Who? The guy playing first. Who is on first? I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. That's it. That's who? Yes. <laughs> Look, you got a first baseman? Certainly. Who's playing first? That's right. When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar of it. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is the fellow's name on first base. Who? The guy that gets the That's money. That's it. Who gets the money on he first base? He does, every dollar. Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Who's wife? Yes. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Look, all I want to know is when you sign up the first baseman, how does he sign his name to the Who? contract? The guy. Who? How does he sign his That's name? That's how he signs it. Who? Yes. <laughs> all I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? No, what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? One base at a time. Well, don't change the players. Right? I'm not changing nobody. Take it easy, buddy. I'm only asking you who's the guy on first base? That's right. Okay. All right. <laughs> No, so what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on who's second. Who's on first? I don't know. Oh, he's on third. We're not talking about him. Now, let's <laughs> now, how did I get on third base? Why, you mentioned his name. If I mentioned a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? What's on first? What's on second? I don't know. He's on third. There I go, back on third again. <laughs> <laughs> Look, will you stay on third base oh, and don't go off it? All right, nobody will know. Now, who's playing third base? Why do you insist on putting who on third base? What am I putting on third? Oh, what is on second? You don't want who on second? Who is on first? I don't know. Third, third base? <laughs> Sure. The left fielder's name. Why? I just thought I'd ask. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Then tell me who's playing left field. Who is playing first? I'm not. Stay out of the infield. Well, the <laughs> I want to know what's the guy's name in left field. No, what is on second? I'm not asking you who's on who's second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> and the left fielder's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. Me, this field. Look, well look, I look, look. You got a pitcher on a team? Sure. The pitcher's name? Tamara. You don't want to tell me the date? I'm telling you, then man. Go ahead. Tamara. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's pitching? Now, listen. Who is not pitching? I'll who break is... your arm, you say. Who's on <laughs> first? <laughs> I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> Are the catcher? Certainly. The catcher's name. Today. Today. And Tamar's pitcher. Now you've got it. All we got is a couple of days on the team. Well, <laughs> You know, I'm a catcher, too. So they tell me. I get behind a plate, do some fancy catching. Tomorrow's pitching on my team, and a heavy hitter gets up. Yes. Now, the heavy hitter bunched the ball. When he bunched the ball, me being a good catcher, I want to throw the guy out of first base, so I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you've said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, that's all you have to do. Just to throw the ball at first base. Yes. Now, who's got it? Naturally. <laughs> Look, if I throw the ball at first base, somebody's got to get it. Now, who has it? Naturally. Who? Naturally. Naturally? Naturally. 
So I pick up the ball and I throw it to natural. No, you don't. You throw the ball in a hole. Naturally. That's different. That's what I said. You're not saying that. I throw the ball in naturally. You throw it to who? Naturally. That's it. That's what I said. Listen. You ask me. I throw the ball to who? Naturally. Now you ask me. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's it. Same as you. <laughs> don't change them around. Whoever it is drops the ball and the guy runs a second. Yes. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it to? I don't know. I don't know. Throws it back to tomorrow. Triple play. Yes. Another guy gets up and it's a long fly ball to be caused. Why? I don't know. He's on third and I don't give a darn. Well, what? I said I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. I mean, Come on. <laughs> constant through all the years, Ray, has been baseball. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight and the Mets win. Now the 2-1. Line drive to the base Just as the score of the tying run. Green to the plate. And he is safe. Safe at the plate. The Braves go to the World Series. We have reserved seats somewhere along one of the baselines and set them with children cheered their heroes. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A three-run home run for Bucky Dent. The Yankees now lead it by a score of three to two. Ladies and gentlemen, Mazeroski has hit a one-nothing pitch over the left field fence at Ford Field to win the 1960 World Series. They'll arrive at your door as innocent as children longing for the past. The Pope arrived at Yankee Stadium. As one enthusiastic announcer put it, he is standing on second base. Reggie Jackson. Long drive right field. It is hot by big, big World Series for Reggie Jackson. The Blue Jays are World Series champions as Joe Carter hits a three-run home run. Back and throw.
It's time once again for Furman University Baseball on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Good time for Jordan to pop number five of the year right here and get us right back in this thing. All the action, all season long. And he swings and he hits it high and deep. Left field, oh, see ya. On air and online at FurmanPaladins.com or follow the Furman IMG Sports Network on the TuneIn Radio app. Furman Baseball. I'd like to say that it works that way all the time, but it doesn't. Now let's head out to the stadium to the voice of the Paladins, Dan Scott. Well, good evening, everybody, from Latham Stadium here on the beautiful campus of Furman University. Welcome to today's broadcast of Furman Paladins Baseball. Tonight, it's back into the Southern Conference for three games this weekend as the Bucks of ETSU come calling to provide the opposition. Night game tonight, and because of the pending weather on Sunday, a doubleheader tomorrow starting at 1 p.m. I'm Dan Scott. Very, very happy to have you with us. All of a sudden, this Furman team starting to get some momentum rolling in its direction. They have won four in a row coming off of that nine-game losing streak. And with the sweep of Western Carolina last weekend, moved out of the basement in the Southern Conference into a tie for seventh place and have a chance to do some moving up here today. And to do it, they're going to rely on left-hander Grant Sherman in the opener. Yes, you heard me correctly. Not Will Gaddis, but Grant Sherman. Why? Well, when we talk to Brett Harker in just a moment, he'll explain some of the reasoning behind making that move. Grant will be opposed by right-hander Ryan Simpler for the Bucks. Furman comes in at 15 and 20 overall, four and eight in the league, while ETSU is 19 and 15. They are two up and seven down in Southern Conference play. When we come back, we'll hear from the head coach, Brett Harker, on the Atlanta Bread Company pregame after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hey, Furman fans, it's baseball season. Here at Ingalls, we know that as you root, root, root for the home team, sometimes you want more than just peanuts and Cracker Jack. And while we do deliver on your favorite ballpark classics, we're proud to offer a packed lineup of everything you need to make your next meal a home run. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Furman Baseball and the official grocery store of Furman Athletics. Go Dins. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point offers a dining experience that will have you coming back for more time and time again. Everything is freshly made on site, including the different varieties of bread and all the baked goodies. And the menu, Atlanta Bread Company offers a wide variety from hot soups and chili to hot and cold sandwiches and paninis. Even breakfast selections topped off with your choice of piping hot coffees. Come see for yourself. You'll love it. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point, proud sponsors of the Furman Paladins and the Dan Scott Show. Paladins back at home this weekend and back into a SoCon play, riding a four-game winning streak after Tuesday's victory here, or Wednesday's victory, I should say, over Presbyterian College. And today it's ETSU for the first of three, single game tonight, and now a doubleheader on Saturday because of the uh, pending weather on Sunday. Dan Scott with head coach Brett Harker. They got back on the right track in the midweek uh, after what happened uh, at Western last weekend. So four in a row now, and and I thought your kids looked pretty good, all things considered, on Wednesday night. Yeah, we really swung the bats well, played uh, well defensively, and threw the ball well when we needed to. And you mix all that in in the midweek, and you're going you're gonna to have some success, and we beat a good PC team, and uh, it was good to, to get that role in midweek again. It's been a while since we won midweek, and once again, that was one of the things that we harped on this offseason was you know, being much better on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and a lot of times that's just going to matter on who you got on the mound and are they going to throw it over that 17-inch plate. And uh, for the most part, we did that and uh, came away with the victory. You know, you can analyze and overanalyze basically every part of, of this game. Um, but I look at the last four games of the losing streak versus this four-game winning streak. You made ten errors, I think, in those last four games of the losing streak, and only one 
in this four-game winning streak. And boy, when you just feel the ball, even just making routine plays, it just makes everything flow that much better. Yeah, so, you know, this game's hard enough as it is to hit. If you, if you don't give them stuff, you know, people are still going to earn it. And look, so Southern Conference is a very offensive league. And, you know, we played at Latham, which is a small, really small park. And we played at Western, which is, you know, top three small parks. Um, but when you don't give free outs, um, you know, a lot of times a home run is going to be a solo one or you're not going to have two or three guys on and putting up crooked numbers. And it's just funny. And you harp on it all the time. And, um, you know, we're just right now I feel like the pitching, we have a recipe for success. I was looking at it again today. We're still top five in the nation on fewest walks allowed per nine innings. And uh, I know that eventually he's got to catch up to more wins. And we're starting to see that happen now with the, the combination of no free passes with walks or with errors and you're making guys earn it. It's tough to put up crooked numbers and we've done a good job and that's why a big part of why we've won four in a row. You know, one big part of that defensively is the left side of your infield has settled down and solidified. Jake uh, has looked a lot better down at third base now. His throws are on target. And Brett Hebner has really settled in defensively as a shortstop after that period of time where you were kind of going back and forth. Yeah, they've both played exceptionally well. Jake, we knew Jake. That's how Jake played. That's how he played last year. Um, so we knew he'd come around and then – Hebner's just done what we've asked him to do. Just We just want a guy that we know when the ball's hit there, the umpire's going to hold his fist up. You don't have to be special about it. Just get the job done. He's done a great job of that. And then, you know, if whatever he does on the offensive side is a plus, and he has done it offensively as well, and that's been good to see him do. All right, so as we move forward into this weekend series, you're kind of switching things up. Well, not kind of. You're, it's kind of a dramatic switch in your uh, weekend pitching rotation. And by that, instead of Will Gaddis going on Friday nights, you're going to move him to Saturday and pitch Grant Sherman on Friday night this weekend. Yeah, I'm pulling a little Joe Madden move here and just, you know, match-wise, we just think it's a better matchup. Gaddis going on Saturdays, we think that uh, it's harder to see the ball at night. We think that can help Sherman and his changeup. We think bullpen-wise, with Gaddis throwing being uh, our starting pitcher that goes the longest on average. We think if he goes second game, it gives our bullpen a rest in between game one and three. There's a number of reasons why we like to move. We Look, from here on out, we're looking to win series, and we just think this matchup fares very well for us. And we'll see if it's a good move or not. But look, at the end of the day, I got to make decisions that I think is best for the ball club, whether it's conventional, unconventional. And uh, I, I just think it's going to be a really good move for us. I think that if we can win on Saturday night with – with uh, Sherman, everybody's sitting there going, boy, we we got a chance to take this series quick with Gaddis on the mound on Saturday. And I continue to say, I think we got the best Sunday guy in the SoCon. I think that uh, Quarles is really, really good. And just overall, there was so many positives versus just, hey, he's your, you know, he's your number one guy throw him on Friday. That was the only reason we continued to throw Will on Friday. So, you know, it's the first week trying it out. I've talked about it for quite a while. I talked about it last year as well. Uh, but never did it, so we'll see. We'll see how it works out. As we get set to play this one, uh, a seemingly innocent hit by pitch on uh, against on Brandon Elmy on Wednesday against PC um, has turned into something a little more serious. So much so that he's not in the lineup today. Yeah, we're you know it, it hit him perfectly on on a bone on his uh, on his knee and it's, it's nothing serious, nothing's fractured or anything, but he's just having a hard time moving around. We thought we got him loosened up yesterday, and he just was not feeling good today during BP. Um, they're working on him right now, but as of uh, 4:30 right now, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to be in the lineup unless something changes in the training room and they figure out a way to to get that thing loose. Which look, he's our three-hole hitter and the great first base. So that's a that's a big hit for us. But next man up, and uh, Boswell's going to get the start over there at first as long as everything stays the same. And we think he swings the bat well. And, hey, it's all about taking advantage of opportunities. He's going to get an opportunity to do something with it. 
Well, and as we close it out, I guess if there's anything that has been uh, an absolute truth for this club this season, it's you've learned how to deal with adversity. I think we're tough. I really do. And this will just be another test to see what kind of toughness we have. But, you know, not only are we tough, we're, also, we're now learning how to win. So you, you can be as tough as you want. You still got to learn how to win. I think we're finally learning how to win and got tough along the way. So I'm, I'm really, really excited about where we're sitting right now as a program. And this is a huge weekend for us. At home, um, defending Latham against a SOCON team. Uh, this is a really big weekend for us, and uh, looking forward to see how the boys compete. And we'll find out soon enough, Brett. Good luck. Thank you, Dan. That's Brett Harker. Stay tuned. Lineups first pitch next on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, The Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, The Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and of course their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made-from-scratch desserts, and don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm-fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest that is the Hungry Drover. If you've been sidelined with an injury, sore joints, or back pain, the experts of Piedmont Orthopedic Associates can offer you both surgical and non-surgical care to get you moving again. Piedmont Orthopedic Associates' 15 surgeons and two spine physicians are all board certified and are committed to providing you with excellent orthopedic care. Visit us online at GetMovingWithPOA.com. If you're ready now, the starting lineups first for East Tennessee State. Chris Cook leads it off. He's the shortstop. Batting second in right field is Aaron Mayer. The catcher, Hagan Owenby, will hit third. Batting cleanup at first base, Christian Bailey. The DH is Caleb Longley. He'll bat fifth, hitting sixth at third, Colin Smith. Blake Rowlett will bat seventh. He's the second baseman in left field. And batting eighth is Jammer Strickland and batting ninth in center is Hunter Parker. Paladins are taking the field and with them comes a uh, group known as the Upstate Devils Baseball Club. Seven and eight year olds largely from the Travelers Rest area. They are getting a big time thrill right now as they run out to the field to stand beside the Paladin players right ahead of the National Anthem, which is where we're going right now as soon as Jay Rattery finishes with the introductions. Here we go with our National Anthem. You can no doubt hear the wind, which is blowing pretty much straight in right now as we continue with our lineups. Now for the Paladins and first-year head coach Brett Harker, it will be Jabari Richards leading off in right field, batting second in left, Carter Grote. Jason Costa, the DH tonight, hitting third. Sky Overton will be in center field and back cleanup. Catching and batting number five is Cameron Whitehead, the second baseman. And six hitter is Sims Griffith. With Brandon Elmy out, John Michael Boswell starts at first base and hits seventh. 
Brad Hebner will bat eighth and play shortstop and batting ninth at third, Jake Crawford. On the mound going through his warm-ups now is the uh, Cincinnati and Grant Sherman, the redshirt sophomore left-hander. Six 195-pounder is making on the season start number 10. He has one complete game, three and four, a 639 earned run average. 50 and two-thirds innings, 62 hits, 45 runs, 36 earned. Just struck out 27, walked only eight, and the opposition hitting 297 against him. So we will see how this change in the philosophy of the weekend pitching rotation pays off, at least in the short term, as Chris Cook, the right-handed batting shortstop, makes his way to the batter's box. Leading off the game for East Tennessee State, shortstop number two, Chris Cook. Sherman looks into Whitehead for the sign. He winds and delivers, and the first pitch is lined into left center field for a base hit. It's going to split the gap and go all the way to the wall. Carter Grote quickly wheels it back to the infield, but Cook, a first pitch double, and that's how this game gets underway, 6.01 p.m., our official first pitch time here this evening. So Cook looking first pitch fastball. He got it and extends his hitting streak to six games right out of the gates. Defensively for the Paladins, John Michael Boswell at first, Sims Griffith at second, Brett Hebner at short, Jake Crawford at third. Left to right in the outfield, Carter Grote, Sky Overton, and Jabari Richards, and Cam Whitehead behind the plates. Here's Aaron Mayer, left-handed batting right fielder. And the first pitch to him is a breaking ball that drops in for strike one. Gary Swanson, the home plate umpire. Gary Keller on the first base side. Ken Fitz on the third base side. 369 batter is Mayer. Sherman with the 0-1, and he swings at a high fastball and fouls it out of play down the left field side. And Grant jumps ahead at no balls and two strikes. Couple of home runs, 19 RBIs for Mayer. He's riding a seven game hitting streak and has reached base safely in his last 18 games. Sherman ready with the 0-2 pitch. And he reaches for it, lofts it out into shallow right center, but Overton able to get over and easily make the catch. And there's one out. No advancement by Cook out at second. Dimensions here, 330 down the lines, 395 straight away center, 371 to right center, and 350 the short porch out in left center field. Preseason SOCON Player of the Year, Hagen Oabe. The Bucks catcher settling in now. And Sherman delivering a first pitch to him, and it just missed outside, ball one. 84 degrees, our game time temperature clear, and as, again, you can no doubt hear, very windy. And that wind is blowing straight in. Owen being at 316. He's homered seven times and knocked in 28 runs. Takes a strike from Sherman. It's even now at one and one. This is a ETSU team that pounded 77 home runs a year ago. Sherman with a long pause and the 1-1 one, one pitch. Misses low, 2-1. and one. So far this year, they've hit 33, so the power numbers are down, but you look up and down the lineup, and they've got guys hitting for average and, and driving in runs. Their overall record is good at 19-15. and 15. OMB fouls it back. It's 2-2. Two they have gotten off to a rough start in conference play. Two and seven in SOCON action on the year. They opened up by losing two of three at home to UNCG. Here's a bluff back to second. We're swept by Western Carolina. 
Let me back up a minute. They opened up at Mercer, losing two of three, then lost two of three to UNCG before being swept at Western. Hard ground ball to Crawford at third. He checks the runner and throws out Owenby. And they are two down. They played out of conference last weekend, sweeping William and Mary. Couple that with a win over Tennessee on April the 11th. And earlier this week, a 7-4 win over Virginia Tech. They've won five in a row. So two down. Sherman trying to pitch around the leadoff double, and here's the guy who leads this Buck team in hits, and he grounds the first pitch to Griffith, who was shading him up the middle. He throws him out, and that's the inning. Leads him in hits, doubles, triples, and RBIs, and in batting average. And Sherman retires him on one pitch, so a nice bounce back after the leadoff double. Retires the next three, and we head to the bottom of inning number one. It's ETSU nothing. And Furman coming to bat on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Stuck in a state of falling behind? Struggling to keep up with your kids, finances, insurance? Then let State Farm agent Steve Borkland in Traveler's Rest help you simplify and get to a better state. Because with Steve handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time for everything else. More money, too. Because adding State Farm policies could mean earning discounts worth up to 40%. That's money Steve can help you put towards a college savings plan. Call State Farm agent Steve Borkland today and get to a better state with State Farm. At SC Telco Federal Credit Union, we're passionate about helping to improve the financial lives of our members. SC Telco is the first financial institution in South Carolina to offer a price link savings account. The Save to Win account allows members to save money, earn interest, and have the chance to win cash prizes. When you're in front of us, you're the only person that matters. Find a location near you at sctelco.com. SC Telco looks forward to serving you. SC Telco is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Grant Sherman pitches around the leadoff double, retires the next three in the top of the first inning, and now Furman offense will try their hand against junior right-hander Ryan Simpler. Simpler is a big guy, 6'4", 230-pounder from Lowe's, Delaware. On the season, making his 10th start like Sherman has a complete game, 5-3 and three with a 3.02 earned run average, 59 and two-thirds inning, 60 hits, 30 runs, 20 earned. Has struck out 68, walked 14, and opposition hitting 258 against him. He'll be facing Jabari Richards, Carter Grote, Jason Costa here. And the first pitch, Richards swinging and coming up empty. It's 0-1. Jabari in at 284. His last eight games, seven starts, hitting 357. And a little half swing. He was fooled by the pitch, and he's quickly behind at no balls and two strikes. Hit his third home run here on Wednesday. A line drive out of here just to the left of the 395 side. Takes that one high. It's one and two. Now 12 RBIs. And Jabari riding a modest three-game hitting streak as he stands in. Simpler's one-two pitch. And he struck him out swinging on a good hard slider down and in. One out. Defensively, Christian Bailey at first. Break, uh, Blake Rowlett at second. Shortstop is Chris Cook. Colin Smith is at third. Left to right in the outfield, Jammer Strickland. Hunter Parker and Aaron Mayer. Hagen Owen be behind the plates. Now well, here steps the hottest hitter in Furman's lineup. Carter Grote as he takes the first pitch outside, hitting 400 even in his last 10 games, 16 for his last 40. And he lines this one into right center field. That's going to be in for a base hit. Parker fills it on one big hop deep into the gap and quickly spins and wheels it back to the infield. And Grote, after a big turn, holds up at first base. 
So Carter now with a six game hitting streak. He's reached base in 11 straight with that hit. And Jason Costa will step in. 333. Four homers, 17 RBIs, and the first pitch to him. Off speed pitch, high, ball one. Give Costa a little bit of room out in right center field. And a huge hole on the right side. Rowell at the second baseman shading toward the bag. And a breaking ball in the dirt. Good stop by Owen, but it rolls three or four feet out in front of the plate. And Grote wisely stays put. Wednesday night's 11-6 win over Presbyterian College was just Furman's second night victory this season. A game that starts 6 p.m. or later is designated as a night game. Two and seven in those games. Trying to add one to it here and keep their overall winning streak alive and their conference winning streak alive. A couple of throws to first to drive Grote back and simpler with the 2-0 pitch to Costa. And he takes it high, ball three. Simpler when he looks in for the sign, he stands pretty much straight up. And then as he starts into his set position, he goes into a knee bend that includes a spin towards first base to get a last look at the runner before he straightens up to pitch. And when he does here, he walks Costa on Center four pitches. So the Paladins have Scott two on with one out and Sky Overton striding plateward. Sky hitting an even 300. Three homers and 18 runs batted in. And Simpler's first pitch to him is right down Duncan Chapel, strike one. Got some folks taking in the game from the hillside out in left field. Beautiful night to do it, too. The 0 1, way outside, one ball and one strike. Nice number of fans getting their first look at these new seats here at Latham Stadium. And of course the veranda outside the doors of the baseball building as always full of the parental types here. Overton hits one back into right field on the run and making the catch as he moves toward the line is Mayer tagging and moving to third is Groat. Overton hit that ball a long way the other way. The mayor able to run it down. So runners on the corners with two out for Cam Whitehead. Catcher number 16, Cam Whitehead. Starting to show some signs as we talked about at Western Carolina in that series. He started all three games and then Wednesday night against PC, he had three hits. And his average is up 25 points to it's current 220. Chance to drive in a run here with two outs and runners at first and third. And he's waves at a breaking ball. As a team, the Paladins are hitting 268 with runners in scoring position. Swinging a foul tip into OMB's mint. Whitehead, who obviously has been struggling for much of the season, just 115 in such situations. But again, starting to show some signs. Behind here, 0 2. And he waves at an off speed breaking ball, strike three. And the inning is over. So Simpler pitches out of some one out difficulty. Paladins get a hit and strand two. And after one, 
no score at Latham Stadium. This is the Furman IMG Sports Network. When you go in search of a fence company, what's your criteria? Experience? Trust? A company that gets it right the first time and stand behind its work? Then your search is over. Faulkner Fence has been Greenville's fence company for more than 40 years. Ed Faulkner started the business, and now Sun Todd continues the tradition of excellence. So regardless of your fencing needs, commercial, industrial, or residential, trust the company that Greenville has trusted for over four decades. Faulkner Fence, 864-271-4626 or online at FaulknerFenceCompany.com. Hi, Furman fans. Dan Scott here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. Neither team able to score in the first, although both teams got runners into scoring position. We move on to the second. It'll be five, six, and seven for ETSU. Caleb Longley, Cullen Smith, and Blake Rowlett. On the off chance that you haven't heard because of the pending weather on uh, Sunday, 90% chance of rain. They have decided to play a doubleheader here tomorrow, so it will be a long day at the Old Ball Orchard starting first pitch of game one at 1 p.m. ETSU, designated hitter number 21, Caleb Longley. Caleb Longley, right-handed batter settling in, 343 on the season. And the first pitch to him, he's wailing at it, and he comes up empty on a Sherman breaking ball, 0-1. Tied for the team lead with seven home runs, second on the club in RBIs with 33. And he pops this one out behind first foul territory, and nobody going to get to it. Boswell going out, Richards coming in, and Griffith trying to split both of them. Neither could get there. So it's no balls and two strikes. Longley currently with a 13-game hitting streak, and he has reached base in 26 consecutive games. Sherman out ahead of him, 0-2. Grant winds and delivers. And again, it's fouled right side. This one will clear the baseball building. Coming up in the top of the fourth inning, we are going to spend a little bit of time chatting with Brad Pochard, who is not only the coach of that seven- and eight-year-old baseball team that's here, Ground ball hit to the left of Griffith. He gets over and throws him out, and there's one down. It just happens to be Furman's dean of admissions. So we're going to talk to him for a little bit about his day job, his spare time coaching baseball, and talk about how athletics kind of meshes with the Furman advantage that's been rolled out. Breaking ball to Cullen Smith, the third baseman, in for a strike 0 and 1. Left handed batter at 283. It's homeward once and knocked in 28. That breaking ball hangs inside. It's 1 and 1. After giving up the first pitch double to Chris Cook, Sherman has retired the next four. The 1 1 pitch. High and away with a fastball. Two balls and a strike. Never ceases to amaze me. 2-1. Swing and a miss. Actually a foul tip. We broadcast right here at Concord level. Concourse level. And people will walk up here, see and hear what I'm doing. It's a line drive over short in the left center, a base hit. Throw it over to cut it off and get it back to the infield to hold Smith to a single. And that's the second hit for the Bucks. He's at first with one out for the second baseman, Blake Rowlett. Second, second baseman, number 25, Blake Rowlett. They will turn and look at you and still stand right in front of you. Rowlett. 
Rowlett, the left-handed batting second baseman at 262. Has six homers and has driven in 29. And he takes a strike on the outside corner from Sherman. Zach Lucas coaches at third for the Bucks. Sean Dwyer at first. Tony Skoll, the head coach in his 18th season at ETSU. That pitch outside. One and one. It's 4.36 and 5.09 during his time at ETSU. Overall, 21 seasons as a college baseball coach. 5.36 and 5.68. Called strike two on a breaking ball in the inside corner. And Sherman ahead of ball and two strikes on Rowlett with Jammer Strickland, the left fielder and number eight hitter on deck. Runner goes, pitch is taken low for a ball, throw down, and he is out. Cam Whitehead put it right on the money. Hebner took the throw, and Smith is shot down. Two to six on the caught stealing. And there's two away. It's the first time Smith has been caught this year. He was four for four. So two outs, the base is empty. A 2-2 pitch coming to Rowlett, and he struck him out swinging on a breaking ball in the dirt. Whitehead will throw to first to complete the strikeout. And the inning is over. First punch out for Grant Sherman. They get a hit. Nobody left. Middle of the second. Scoreless at Latham Stadium. Back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hey, Furman fans, it's baseball season. Here at Ingalls, we know that as you root, root, root for the home team, sometimes you want more than just peanuts and Cracker Jack. And while we do deliver on your favorite ballpark classics, we're proud to offer a packed lineup of everything you need to make your next meal a home run. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Furman Baseball and the official grocery store of Furman Athletics. Go Dins! The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point offers a dining experience that will have you coming back for more time and time again. Everything is freshly made on site, including the different varieties of bread and all the baked goodies. And the menu, Atlanta Bread Company offers a wide variety from hot soups and chili to hot and cold sandwiches and paninis. Even breakfast selections topped off with your choice of piping hot coffees. Come see for yourself. You'll love it. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point, proud sponsors of the Furman Paladins and the Dan Scott Show. <laughs> Sims Griffith to lead it off here in the second for the Paladins. Griffith, Boswell, and Hebner, six, seven, and eight. Sims Griffith. Sims, another one is showing some signs of coming around at the plate. Takes a strike on the first pitch. 220 on the year for the homer and 10 RBIs. Swings and foul tips that one into the mid of Owen B, and he's quickly behind Owen 2. Steps out of the box, takes a Big deep breath now settles back in. Simpler winds and the 0-2 pitch is down and away a fastball. Got our email up if you'd like to drop us a line. Furman Baseball at Yahoo.com. Furman Baseball at Yahoo.com. Or on Twitter, it's Dan Scott Show. And we'd like to welcome those of you tuning in who are watching and our fans of the visitors here today, we are very happy to have you with us. And it's a beautiful night for baseball here at Latham Stadium. Griffith stayed alive with a foul ball. It's still a ball and two strikes. Simpler winds and delivers, and he takes it high. Does Griffith two and two. Right-hander bringing it. 
And a chopper by the mound, backing up as a second baseman, Rowlett. Got the big hop and throws out his opposite number for the first out of the inning. Now John Michael Boswell getting the start today with Brandon Elmy on the shelf. Elmy, if you recall, was hit by a pitch on Wednesday in the sixth inning against PC. Stayed in the game, finished it. But it hit him right on a bone on the side of the left knee, his front leg. And it has swollen up and stiffened up on him and tries to give it a go during batting practice today and just didn't have the lateral movements, according to Brett Harker. So they sent him back to the training room and Boswell gets an opportunity. Just one for 10 on the season with an RBI. He's ahead, two balls and no strikes in the count here. And he chops this one off the glove of the third baseman, Cullen Smith. And it rolls out in the shallow left center field. And Boswell is a leadoff base runner, what will probably be scored an error, but we'll see. Regardless, it's a base runner. And with one out, here's Brett Hebner. Hebner hitting 292 in his last seven games, all starts. Takes the first pitch. Hitting 266 overall in the season. And he chops this one foul between the bag and coaching box at third. Taylor Harbin watched it roll by. Jeff Kimmel coaching down at first. One ball, one strike to count. Hebner's hit in three straight. couple of doubles here on Wednesday night. Drove in two runs, now has five on the season. Another throw to first and Boswell back. They did give Cullen an error. That's his eighth of the season. Now the 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball that didn't, slipped out of his hand and stayed high. Two balls and a strike. A couple of other games already underway. One final, in fact. Western Carolina knocked off VMI 9-1 to in the first game of their series up in Cullowhee. Evener fouls it off. It's 2-2. Two and, two. and top of the seventh inning. Down in Charleston, Citadel trying to deal Mercer just its second conference loss of the year. Leading the Bears 5-3. 2-2 pitch to Hebner, and he stays alive by fouling one off right side again. Boswell at first on the air, one out. Hebner now in a 2-2 count, Jake Crawford on deck. Sampler straightens up. And again, the break-even pitch. Lined into center, but playing him shallow and making the play was Parker. And they are two down. So now Crawford. Like Hebner, 266 on the season, Jake. Had two hits and drove in a pair of runs on Wednesday night and takes a weak swing at a breaking ball and comes up empty 0-1. Still stuck on the one homer and now 15 runs batted in. He's hit in five straight. Throw to first and Boswell dives back to the bag. Oh, one pitch, chopped towards third, and another kick by Colin Smith. 
Here comes Boswell trying to get the third. He's safe as Smith can't handle the throw from the shortstop Cook. Second error of the inning for Cullen Smith. Crawford hustled into second base, so now you've got him at second and third with two out for Jabari Richards. Jabari struck out swinging, leading off the Paladin in first inning. Got an opportunity here, though. With two down to get Furman on the board first. First pitch to him is outside, ball one. Man, tough inning for Cullen Smith down at third. Now let's see if the Paladins can take advantage of it. It's going to take something with two outs. The 1-0 pitch. Big swing and a foul straight back. Had a good pitch to hit there. One and one. Jabari hitting just 136 with runners in scoring position, but 364 with two outs in an inning. And he swings and misses here, and he's behind the ball and two strikes again. Looks like on the first couple of swings, or that swing in particular, he kind of pulled his head off just a little bit. Second and third, two down. Richards in a one-two hole. Simpler sets and delivers, and he misses low. Two balls, two strikes. Jabari out of the box now, settling back in. Simpler, a long look into Owen being now ready with the 2 2 pitch. And he missed outside, three balls and two strikes. So, behind one and two, he's battled back. To work the count full with Carter Grote on deck. Boswell leading at third. Crawford out at second. And Owen be the catcher asked for time. Richards will step out, quickly adjust the batting gloves, and now back in. Simpler sets and the payoff pitch. Foul back. The weekend in Cullowee prior to Easter Sunday, facing three left-handers, Barry Richards probably had his best stretch at the plate, not necessarily from just all the base hits, but his approach. And he takes ball four high here, so he went from one and two to working the count full, worked a base on balls. And now Carter Grote will bat with the bases loaded. Carter singled in the first inning with one out, advanced all the way to third before the inning was done, but was stranded when Whitehead struck out. So, guy at the plate who 15 of his 29 RBIs this year have come with two outs, and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Bases loaded this season, 250, 396 with runners in scoring position. He takes the fastball off the plate outside. One and one. This situation continues to be an albatross for the Paladins, though. Just nine for 40 this season with the bases loaded. That's a 225 average. One, one pitch and a foul back to the screen. And Grote, like Richards before him, in a one ball, two strike hole. It's an awful lot of runs that have been left on base in bases loaded situations alone. And now Grote behind in the count and Simpler asks for his catcher to come out and talk to him, meets him almost halfway between the mound and the plate. It was a brief conversation. And he's back up on top of the rubber waiting for Grote to settle back in. 
Powell is at every base with two down. One and two to Carter Grode in the pitch. And a chopper over the mound, and that will be backhanded by the second baseman. He flips the second, not in time. Infield single, a run scores, and the Paladins lead at 1-0. Only chance Rowland had once he got to that ball is a big bouncing ball up the middle. Was hoping for a force out at second, but his flip to the shortstop cook covering was late. And you thank goodness for Jabari Richards' good speed there. Boswell scores from third. one nothing. Furman, and now Costa bats with the bases loaded and two down. 30th RBI of the year for Carter Groats. Costa walked on four pitches in the first inning. And he takes it down and away, ball one. Now time called. His pitching coach Chris Gordon will make his way out to the mound to talk to his right-hander and be joined there by his entire infield. Looking for a specific stat sheet here. And that's not it. There it is. Looking at some of the numbers on Costa in situations like this. Overall runners in scoring position, 321. Two outs in an inning, though, hitting just 194 for 21. And with the bases loaded, he's one for four. So he's got some numbers that he can Im improve on greatly with a base hit here. Meeting is over. One ball and no strikes. Simpler pitching. And the off-speed pitch in there for a strike, one and one. Carter Grote with two hits already today, just continuing what has been a trend of beating up on Buccaneer pitching. Costa lays off that one. It's just off the plate outside, two and one. In four games a year ago, Carter was seven for 11 against ETSU pitching. Scored five runs, homered once which accounted for his only RBI. Now Costa steps out for a moment. He will step back in. Bases loaded, two down, a run in. one nothing. Furman in the bottom of the second, and Costa hits it hard, backhanded by the second baseman, though he'll throw him out. And the inning is over. But the Paladins get an unearned run. One hit, two errors, and three left. After two, Powellton's on top, one nothing, and you're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. I was surprised recently when I learned that Americans spend $80 billion a year on illegal sports gambling. Sure, that's spread out over millions of gamblers, but still, it makes you wonder where that money's coming from. Unfortunately, too often, it's coming from money that was intended to buy groceries, pay the mortgage, or even put children through college. If gambling's had a negative impact on your life, call the SC Gambling Hotline toll-free at 877-452-5155. Help is confidential and available 20 24 hours a day. A message from the South Carolina Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. Palmetto Pride, South Carolina's anti-litter and beautification organization, would like you to do your part to help keep South Carolina beautiful. Don't litter. Report litter bugs and litter hotspots by calling the Litter Buster hotline at 1-877-7-LITTER or by using our Trash Tracker app. No one trashes South no one trashes my state. And Grant Sherman given a slim one nothing lead to protect as we move to the top of the third inning. If you happen to be scoring with us at home, there was a third error in that inning. On the second ball that Colin Smith booted at third base, the one that rolled down the left field line a bit, the shortstop Cook goes out, picks it up, throws, and it's dropped by the pitcher covering at third or got away from the pitcher, so they give the error on the throw to Cook, his 10th of the season. 
Meanwhile, back at the ranch, first pitch swinging, Jammer Strickland singles in the left field, and that's how the buck third begins. Their third hits. So here's the number nine hitter, Hunter Parker. Left-handed batter. 358 hitter on the year. First pitch to him, he bunts back toward the mound. Sherman looks at second. He'll throw to first instead to retire Parker. The sacrifice works. One to three on the put out. Advance Strickland to second. That's the tying run in scoring position as we go back to the top of the order. For the shortstop, Chris Cook, he swung at the first pitch of the game and doubled to the wall in left center field, but was left stranded there when Sherman retired the next three. First pitch to him, and he swings, and it's a 2-1 ball game. Home run about halfway up the hill and straight away left field. He got a fastball up. He has taken two swings. He's got two extra base hits. That's his seventh homer of the year. RBI's 25 and 26, and just like that, the Bucks turn it around and take a one-run lead. A line drive out of here. Carter Grote took three or four steps and just stopped and watched. So base is empty. Here's Aaron Mayer who flied to center his first time. And a breaking ball drops in for strike one. For Grant, that's the 12th home run he's allowed this year and now 51 innings. Gets that one in for a strike. He's quickly ahead of Mayer 0-2. Lefty rocks and fires and it's pop foul. Out of play, third base sign. Count holds it, no balls and two strikes. And the Little League team in the house and the pizza has arrived. That'll settle them down for a little bit. 0-2 pitch lined into right center field. That'll drop for a hit. Richards fields it on a hop. Third hit of the inning, fifth overall. And Sherman, who was ahead, no balls and two strikes, made a mistake. And Mayer gets a base hit, and now Hagen Owenby. Grounded out hard to Crawford at third in the first inning. Right-handed batter settling in. And Sherman ready to go to work on him. First pitch, low and away, ball one. So 2-1 ETSU. After Furman got the unearned run in the bottom of the second, Chris Cook, two-run homer here in the third to turn it around. And now two balls and no strikes to Owenby. Sherman sets at the belt and delivers. And it's popped up, foul behind the plate. Whitehead gives it a look, but it's out of play. Two balls and a strike. Outfield just about straight away for the right-handed hitter. Overton a step or two towards right center. Runner goes. Pitch is fouled out of play right side. And Sherman's come back to even the count at two balls and two strikes. Christian Bailey on deck. Inning started with Strickland singling on the first pitch. Hunter Parker sacrificed him to second, and now throw to first base. 
Leadoff hitter Chris Cook, first pitch he saw. Line drive home run to left to make it two to one. And Aaron Mayer on an 0-2 pitch, singled into right center field. Two balls and two strikes on Owenby, pitching. And there's a drive back into left center field. Grote on the run, leaping, and he got a glove on it. They couldn't hold it. It's rolling back toward the infield. He finally locates it, but a run will score to make it three to one. And Owen be safe at second base with an RBI double, his 29th run of the year. I'm not 100% certain, but Carter Grote might have taken a home run away from Hagen Owenby. And if he did, he flipped it back into the field of play. And by the time he recovered, Mayer had scored easily and Owenby was at second with the RBI two base hit. So three runs in the inning and they're not done. Here's Bailey and he takes it high, ball one. Grounded out the second to end the first inning. Sherman with the pause. The 1-0 pitch. This is high again, 2 and 0. Oh. If there's anything that's been proven again today, it's as Grant just can't pitch up in the zone. When he's on, the fastball's got some downward motion to it, and that pitch right there is his money pitch to change up. He got Bailey swinging wildly at it on 2 and 0. Oh. It's now two balls and a strike. Owen be at second, still just one out. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball that time. And he's come back to even it up at two balls and two strikes. Colin Smith on deck. Long look into Whitehead. And the 2 2 pitch. Fouled out of play, a fastball. Count holding at two and two. Grant really slowing his pace down here with runners on base. His Whitehead rolls through the signs and the break even again. And he rips one that got the foot of third base coach Zach Lucas as he tried to leap out of the way. Count holding it two and two. He wants to flex it, but he refuses to. So he's fouled off back to back fastball. See what he gets here. I'm like he tried to come off speed. He bounced it up there. And now the count's full at three and two. Griffith runs into the backside of the mound, says something to Sherman, now trots back to his position. 3 1, ETSU. They've scored three in the inning. Have Owen be at second, still just one down. Sherman ready with the payoff. Here it is. And a breaking ball that was up and a check swing foul. Bailey saw something off speed up in the zone. Wanted to go and then tried to stop and it was too late. So we'll do the payoff all over again. Here it is. And a ground ball hit up the middle, pass to diving Hebner. Send Owen be back to the bag. He will not advance as Overton got to it. And they'll have him at first and second. You know, you'll go entire seasons without seeing that. That's the second time 
in as many weekends as we've seen that. Matter of fact, it was Overton up in Cullowee who was the runner. That ball was hit dead at Owenby, and it was hit hard, and he had no choice but to retreat back to the bag. Hebner diving to his left, couldn't get to it. So Bailey's first hit, first and second, was still just one out. Here's Longley who bounced out to Griffith leading off the second. And he's way out in front of an off-speed pitch, 0-1. Looks like we might be getting some action down in the Furman bullpen. Sherman with the 0-1. Oh, breaking ball was pop foul. Out of play left side. It's no balls and two strikes. So Grant again ahead in the count, 0-2. TSU with five hits in the inning. They have seven overall. 0-2 oh, pitch. Struck him out swinging. Pitch down and away. Two down. Second strikeout for Grant. And now Colin Smith, who singled with one out in the second, but was thrown out attempting to steal. See if Grant can retire the left-handed hitter, limit the damage to just three, and get his offense back out there. First pitch, a little bit low, maybe outside, ball one. Outfield straightaway, Crawford well off the line, out by the cutout and three or four steps behind the bank. Smith swings and misses at a breaking ball. It's one ball and one strike. Three one ETSU. They've got runners at first and second, two down. Sherman trying to gain the measure of Smith here and limit the damage. Fly ball to the left. Grote moving toward the line. He's got it and the inning is over, but five hits in the inning produced three runs. They strand two and middle of the third. Furman now trailing by a 3-1 score. This is the Furman IMG Sports Network. I was surprised recently when I learned that Americans spend $80 billion a year on illegal sports gambling. Sure, that's spread out over millions of gamblers, but still it makes you wonder where that money's coming from. Unfortunately, too often it's coming from money that was intended to buy groceries, pay the mortgage, or even put children through college. If gambling's had a negative impact on your life, call the SC Gambling Hotline toll-free at 877-452-5155. Help is confidential and available 24 hours a day. A message from the South Carolina Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. Palmetto Pride, South Carolina's anti-litter and beautification organization, would like you to do your part to help keep South Carolina beautiful. Don't litter. Report litter bugs and litter hotspots by calling the Litter Buster hotline at 1-877-7-LITTER or by using our Trash Tracker app. Trash is my state. Well, Ryan Simpler finishes his warm ups here in the bottom of the third inning. His teammates have given him a 3 1 lead over the Paladins. And for Furman, it will be the middle third of the order Overton, Whitehead, and Griffith against the junior right hander. We are joined here in the press box by Brad Pochard, who is the Dean of Admissions here at Furman, and in his spare time, he herds cats. <laughs> Coaches a seven and eight year old travel team, mostly kids from Traveler's Rest. They do some off season work with Jeff Kimmel and the facility here, and they're here in mass taking in the ball game today. And Spend a little bit of time talking with Brad as Overton takes a breaking ball 
for strike one. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Good Great to be here. Watching you run around and run up and down those <laughs> steps, you don't look like a guy who's had three ACL surgeries. Oh my gosh, that isn't that the truth? Between uh, taming twelve and uh, seven and eight year olds, and I've got a two and a half year old down there, and he likes the microphone. So if you hear a little boy running around, that's that's who it is. Yeah. Well, see, I'm hoping. <laughs> And, and since this is largely a firm and crowd, we know they're educated. I'm hoping they're the ones who can read the sign because some of the kids aren't going to be able exactly, to, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so I've uh, threatened them with their life to, to pay attention and be watching the baseball game here. And they're learning from Furman here how to, how to play the game right. So they were great. They got to go down and the team huddle, um, break the huddle with the team, do the national anthem on the field. And I just told Dwight Covington, who was gracious enough to, to set all this up, that the boys feel they're at Fenway Park right now. <laughs> well, that was big time when you get to run out with a college baseball player. You know, it's great. They, uh, you know, Jeff has introduced them a lot to the team as we were doing some work in, in the winter in January, February, and March, and get to know the guys. And, and their eyes were just the size of baseballs when they were out there earlier as, as uh, Furman is warming up and then they were joined the team huddle and broke and ran out to their positions and you could just tell they were on cloud nine. Two balls and two strikes on Overton leading it off. Simpler winds and the break even pitch is hit hard and into right field a base hit. Good way to get it started. So Sky one for two and that is the third hit for the Powell is a leadoff base runner trailing 3-1 here in the bottom of the third. Cam Whitehead will bat. He struck out swinging his first time up. You know, I, I, uh, it's kind of ironic that you're sitting here with, with your job because I always joke, and, and there's a lot of truth to it, but I use it as a joke now that I'm the only play-by-play -play guy in America. Whitehead, a fly ball down the right field line. That'll be playable for Mayer in foul territory, and he makes the catch. Tagging. Heading to second is Overton, and he's going to get in there. That's some heads-up base running by Sky Overton as that ball kept carrying the wind, pushing it, took him all the way to the fence in foul territory in front of the baseball building, and Sky didn't hesitate. Took off. The throw was well off target, and runner in scoring position now with one out for Sims Griffith. Good, uh, good heads-up baseball. Yeah, there. absolutely. Yep. But any your kids can learn from that. That's right. That's right. But I, I always joke that I'm the only play-by-play -play guy for a Division One school in America so who works one, for a school that he right? would not have been allowed to attend. <laughs> I may be the only dean of admissions who works for a school in the country that probably couldn't get himself in. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> so how are things in the admissions office? Oh, things are going really well. We. Um, May 1st is the equivalent in my world to National Signing Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's when all of our students who we've admitted uh, have to make their decision with a, with a formal statement of intent and en enrollment deposit. So a week from Monday. So I, I feel like a coach right now kind of wheeling and dealing and talking to parents and, and rolling out the purple carpet. But uh, uh, numbers are looking good, and we're excited for a great class. Sims Griffith grounded to second his first time up. First pitch from Simpler, and he shows bunt, pulled the bat away, and it cost him a strike 0 1. How has the rolling out of the, the Furman advantage, which has yeah. been getting so much press, how has that impacted um, high school seniors, yeah. even juniors, yeah. wanting to know more about Furman and potentially coming here? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's really been transformative for us. It's given us a chance to to really pinpoint and highlight what the Furman experience is all about. You know, parents um, of high school students, and, and then when we admit them, they're, they're trying to look for that value proposition. And what's, you know, why Furman over um, Elon? Why Furman over w &L or another place? And, and really, the gift of the $50 million plus what we've been able to do and promise and guarantee uh, from the, the research, the study away, the internships, and ultimately the outcomes. You know, what's a Furman education going to do for their students? It's been, it's been transformative. Baseman, Griffith bounces out to the first baseman, Bailey unassisted. Overton advances to third. So, again, it'll take something with two outs. John Michael Boswell reached on an error by the third baseman, Smith, in the first inning and scored the first run. And he waves at a breaking ball down from Simpler. No balls and a strike. 3-1, ETSU on top here in the bottom of the third. And we're visiting with Dean of Admissions, Brad Pochard. The academic uh, reputation of, of Furman, obviously. There's a line oh. drive caught by the pitcher, and the inning is over. Wow. Boswell hit it hard right back through the middle. Unlucky. But nothing to show for it, so the Paladins get a hit, strand a runner, and after three, it's 3-1 three ETSU. We'll keep it here continue chatting with Brad. Um, as I was getting ready to say, the academic reputation obviously 
uh, is uh, speaks for itself. Sure. People know that about Furman. How does athletics mesh with the Furman advantage? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it ultimately gives us a chance to have a, a, a national reputation. You know, um, athletics is often the front porch of your university, and we, we like to say that about admissions as well, but the exposure that athletic gardeners is just fantastic, whether it's the football team playing at Michigan State or, you know, Furman maybe catching, you know, lightning in a bottle here and maybe get to the regional or the super regional. And even with just what happened last month with um, us hosting the NCAA tournament, seeing that Diamond F on TV, um, seeing it on Sunday morning, uh, ESPN broadcasting out front of the Bond Secure Wellness Center with the Furman flag flying in the background. So athletics gives, it, gives us that exposure. And, you know, when it comes to the Furman advantage, you know, these student athletes get to talk about not only are they playing Division I athletics, but they get to capitalize on what the Furman advantage offers to the rest of the student body as students, you know. Um, so they can still be a, a, a top-tier athlete, but still do internships, still do research, still have those opportunities that are going to uh, advance their careers after Furman. When, when we say Furman advantage, for those who may not know exactly what we're talking about. It was an initiative that was rolled out. Explain Correct. what exactly is the Furman Advantage. This is basically Dr. Davis's uh, strategic plan, um, and she coordinated um, a gift from the Duke Endowment, about a $50 million gift um, to support Furman's initiative. And basically what this means is Furman for a long time has been a national leader in undergraduate research internships and study away. And, and we pride ourselves on giving those opportunities to every one of our students. And essentially this allows us to do it better. And it allows us to guarantee that students will have that experience during their time here that will prepare them for life's next step after Furman. And uh, it basically gives them an opportunity to connect with mentors, advisors, have a guaranteed four-year pathway, and then presents them the opportunity to be successful after their time here. Blake Rowlett leading it off, a ball and a strike. Sherman misses high and away. Rowlett struck out, swinging to end the second inning. It's 7, 8, and 9 due up here in the top of the fourth for the Bucks. Rowlett, Strickland, and Parker. Here is Sherman with the 2-1 pitch and a strike on the outside corner, a breaking ball, and he evens it up at 2-2. Two and two. So the... Um, the, the unveiling of the Furman Advantage is just a few months old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How has that changed or impacted your job? Yep. You know, the metrics that, that we measure typically kind of follow a number of applications, um, you know, kind of a, an interest perspective. And we've, we've seen a, a nice bump in applications. But I think we'll see the biggest impact in next year's application cycle. We rolled out the Furman Advantage in the fall. And a lot of our applications had already been submitted. So we're seeing it from students who are saying yes to Furman so far. Fly ball left center, Grote backing, he's got it, and there's one out. I think we'll see a, a nice, even uh, more significant bump in applications next year after we've been talking about it for a year with high school sophomores and juniors. I think that's when we'll see the Let biggest bump. Is, is there still a certain number of, of students that Furman wants here? Are you looking to increase the number of students that will be at the school? Where, yeah. where Does that play into this at all? We want to grow slightly. We um, Furman can house uh, 2,900 students with our current bed capacity with the, the residence halls and the vining. So we're at 2,750 right now. So we want to grow modestly, but we, uh, we'd like to grow demand, penetrate new markets, and gain some interest from other parts of the country where we haven't been. Have you seen how quickly they're throwing up those apartments oh, right no. over here? If you I need know. new housing, man, I talk know. to those people. They that, can get it up in a hurry. That's going to be a little pressure. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need uh, all that more bed space. I'm, I'm happy with the goal of only increasing about 150 students. Called strike three on Jammer Strickland. And two up and two down. And here's the number nine hitter, Hunter Parker, who put down a sacrifice fly, or sacrifice bun his first time up, continuing to visit with... Brad Pochart. So you got all this going on, which obviously takes a lot of doing. And then you decide, I don't have nearly enough pressure in my life. I'm going to coach seven and eight year olds. That's How, right. How'd that come That's around? Right. I'll tell you, I absolutely love it. Being a baseball player myself growing up my whole life and, and had the opportunity to play at a small college up in Ohio and Wittenberg, right? Wittenberg University. Yeah. Yes, sir. And um, so my, my, my oldest is seven and a half. And uh, we we formed this little upstate devils team with a gentleman by the name of Chad McCleese who has coached for a long time. He's got an older son and has done this travel ball stuff. So I'm following his lead. And we've got a good group of young men and uh, good families. And I'll tell you what, though, we're, we're practicing two or three nights a week. We've got a doubleheader tomorrow, doubleheader Sunday. And uh, it takes a lot of time. But I couldn't find, couldn't think of a better way to, to spend a weekend and playing ball with these guys. 
Grant Sherman strikes out Hunter Parker, and that's the inning. That's a nice bounce back inning for Grant. He's got four strikeouts now. Retires him in order, and the inning is over. It's still 3-1 ETSU. To continue to visit here with Brad Pochard. We'll keep him through one more half inning. If he doesn't gener generate any runs, man, <laughs> you're out of here. I know, so. I know. I'm not doing my job here. <laughs> um, you you, uh, you talked about you got a seven and a half, you got yep. a two and a half year old running around. So, too. yeah, JT's uh, seven and a half, and Evan is two and a half, and JT is our, our calm and collected child. And if Evan, <laughs> if Evan would have come first, he may be our only. So, uh, like I said, if you hear somebody uh, running around down there near the microphone, uh, that's certainly him. He, he'd be in, in here in the booth right now with the with the headset on yeah. if I let him. Well, uh, let, <laughs> let me tell you what I've discovered here in the last two years. The, the old saying is true that if you'd have known how great grandchildren were, you'd have had them first. <laughs> that's right. So, that's right. That's uh, right. No. Man, I've. I've done my time. I know exactly, yep. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, we're, we're, it's I, amazing how different my my older one and my young and my youngest. I have two girls, five years apart, five and a half, and yep. it's just amazing how different they are. Yep. My uh, my oldest is kind of chill and laid back, and we'll hang out, watch a game, and you know my uh, two and a half year old is would be down there on the field right now if he could, and he's a ball of fire and run through a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> but they're a lot of fun. I, we're fortunate yeah. enough to have two very good boys. Both went. Uh, to the CDC, the Child Development Center here at Furman. Uh, my wife works here at Furman, and we're a Furman family. We're here at everything, and we've, we just live right down the road, and we just have had an amazing experience, and our boys have fallen in love with the Paladins, that's for sure. Brett Hebner leading it off here in the bottom of the fourth with Furman trailing 3-1. He fouls the first pitch off the leg of catcher Hagen Owenby. Hebner lined out to center his first time up in the second inning. We continue to visit with Dean of Admissions. Brad Pochard. And one of the, the reasons I wanted to kind of talk about that to come back full circle mm -hmm. is I was reading uh, on your your bio a little earlier today. Here's the 0 1 pitch to Hebner. Line drive foul outside of first 0 and 2. It is you, you're well rounded with what you do with your job and coaching and family and everything. And, and you say in your bio that you're looking for well-rounded yep. students, yep. not not just so laser focused on just one thing. Correct, correct. I expand think on that. I think that's um, you know the beauty of a liberal arts education and the beauty of what Furman's all about. You know, ultimately, we want students who are going to come to campus, make an impact, be involved, and be leaders. Because after college, you're going to have life. You're going to have you're going to have a job. You're going to have a family. You're going to have different things pulling at you. And um, I think it's important to understand the balance and, and how to have, you know, different priorities. Uh, but then also you have to understand how to take advantage of what Furman can offer you. If you're just laser focused on even one major or one, even your sport, you're going to miss out on what opportunities Furman can grant you as a whole. So we want to enroll and find students who will take advantage of those opportunities. Hebner strikes out on a breaking ball. One out in the inning. That's the third punch out for Simpler. You know, we, we actually use that thought as a way in which to kind of provide value in a, and also, you know, a, an experience, you know, you know, kind of a competitive advantage, if you will. You know, if we're recruiting a student between us and a large state flagship, you know, students who go play a sport there, they may not have the opportunity to do an internship or study away. Or if you're going to go, you know, be pre-med at another, at another institution, you know, that's all you're going to do. But here, you know, you're still going to have the opportunity to possibly be an athlete or be involved in community service or study away. And it takes a special kid and the right kid to be yeah. able to, to balance that. Jake Crawford tried to check his swing on the first pitch. Breaking ball didn't 0-1. And, and there's strike two called on the outside corner. Jake reached on an error, one of three committed by ETSU in the second inning. Led to Furman's only run down 3-1 to one here in the bottom of the fourth. The other thing that I, I when I was looking at your bio, I, I kind of laughed. You, you said that uh, talking to prospective students, being humble is good, mm -hmm. but not on your college application. Correct, <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> you know, we talk about that a lot, especially when they come to, to interview for merit scholarships. You know, humble, humbleness is a quality and sometimes learn later in life, but this is the time to brag. You know, tell us about your accomplishments. Tell, them, tell us what you've done. You know, this is a time where you're not only going to earn admission to a top 50 national liberal arts college, but you're also going to get a chance to to put yourself in a, in a position to earn some merit scholarship. And that's that's the time to, to put it all out there and tell us what you've done. Jay Crawford leans away from a fastball up and in, and the count is three balls and two strikes with one out, nobody on, and Jabari Richards on deck. Simpler with the wind and the payoff pitch. And he's, oh, man, he called that strike three. 
rings up Crawford, wow. and that ball looked like it was probably a good four to six inches off the plate outside. I agree. I agree. Two down, four strikeouts for Simpler, and here's Richards who has struck out and walked in two times up. So folks want to find out more about Furman Advantage, the admissions process, FurmanPowellers.com, I know, and then if they want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Yes, sir. Um, uh, Furman Admissions is uh, admission at Furman.edu is our um, email address, and uh, you can go check us out there. My information is, is there, um, and uh, Furman, um, yeah, Furman.edu is the best way to go down there and catch uh, everybody's contact information and learn more about us. The other thing I noticed is also one universal. You can have kids who, you know, obviously they're at a the ball game. They're hyper. They've been out there with the heroes. One way to get them to settle down at least for a couple of minutes, pizza. break out the pizza. Pizza. Exactly. That's right. That's right. Again, the gentleman behind us, Dwight Covington, does a great job of uh, getting these kids in here. He set up uh, the whole process for us. We're looking to do the same thing when the Paladins take on Clemson downtown at Fleur Field. We're going to do something very similar. And you know, the great thing about this is a lot of these families, you know, I'm from Ohio, but coming down here, a lot of these families are born and bred uh, Clemson fans mm -hmm. or even USC. And now we're slightly beginning to turn them into Paladins fans. So I, w I want them to go see how Furman's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Clemson and have that big-time feel. So we're going to do something very similar downtown. But you're exactly right. To get them to calm down and slow down a little bit, just put, them in, put a couple pizzas in front of them and at least take, catch your breath for a minute. <laughs> Ball and two strikes on Jabari Richards is – he bats with two outs and nobody on here in the bottom of the fourth inning. First game of three this weekend, doubleheader tomorrow starting at 1 o'clock. Try to beat the rain on Sunday. 1-2 pitch, and it's down and in. Two balls and two strikes. Watch out. Is that the boss? That is the boss right there. The two-and-a-half-year-old is staring right in front of the, <laughs> bro the broadcast window. <laughs> Wanted to know where Daddy was. That's right. That's right. And he's hopefully doing all right. 2-2 two -two pitch to Richards. And he rolls over one and bounces to the first mm -hmm. baseman, Bailey, who will take it himself. And the inning is over. Brad, thank you so much you know, for coming man, thank and, you. and spending some time with us. You didn't get us any runs. I know. So we may I, never speak again. Well, but I'm not as good as your <laughs> former wingman, Ron Smith. I would, wouldn't be doing my job. And, and being a good friend of it, I didn't say hello to Ron if he's listening yeah. up there. Miss you, Ron. And I uh, hope you're doing well. And JT went to one of his first baseball camps. Did so, he really? Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank Ron. Good to see you, man. Appreciate Talk it. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank That's you. Brad Pochard, the uh, Dean of Admissions here at Furman. 3-1. Paladins trailed as we head to the fifth back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Stacks Original at Cherry Dells, a family-owned establishment that might well be the oldest continually operated dining experience in Greenville. And whether it's a hearty breakfast or a meat and three lunch on your plate, you know the food at Stacks is prepared fresh when you order. Stacks is proud to be associated with Furman University for more than 40 years and continues that relationship today. All of us at Stacks wish the Powellmans nothing but the best as they take the field, the court, or venture into the classroom. And remember, when you're hungry, it's Stacks Original at Cherrydale. Go Powell. Let me tell you something, Cowboy. This rookie can really bring the heat. He's smoky and spicy with a Chipotle style all his own. It's a new Montgomery Inn Chipotle barbecue sauce. Make it a part of your home team. Available now at your neighborhood grocer or online at CincyFavorites.com. One score, Powell has trailed as we move on to the fifth inning. Dan Scott with you here as Grant Sherman gets ready to pitch to the top of the order. Chris Cook has seen two pitches and has a double and a two-run homer. This time he takes the first pitch up and away. Ball one. Cook, Mayer, and Owenby. Swings and he fouls this one at the feet of Cam Whitehead. One ball and one strike. First pitch double in the first inning. He was left stranded. And then the two-run homer in the third that gave them the lead. They added another run later. Pitch is low, two balls and a strike. Sherman bounced back to retire the bottom third of the order in order in the fourth. So this will be a big inning for Grant here in the fifth. Swing and a miss, good off-speed breaking ball. And Count evens up at two and two. Really enjoyed getting the chance to chat with Brad. 
Fly ball right center, but there's Jabari Richards. Had him played perfectly, one down. They finally retire Chris Cook. Here's Aaron Mayer who has flied to center, singled and scored a run. Right over number 27, Aaron Mayer. Left-handed batter. And Sherman starts him off with the strike. Grants allowed seven hits, five of them came in that third inning. Foul back out of play and Sherman ahead now, no balls and two strikes. Well, they give him as much of left center field as he wants. The 0-2 pitch came inside and he fouled it back to the screen. It's been a big day on campus here. Tennis action going on. And tonight there's, besides baseball, lacrosse over at the stadium. Outside one and two. But the feature presentation today, without question, was the Special Olympics that went on this morning. There were bus after bus after bus of kids coming onto this campus. Strike three swinging, a good pitch down. Two away, that's five strikeouts now for Sherman. He has retired seven in a row. And here's Hagen Owenby, who's grounded to third and doubled in a run. It looked like Grote went above the wall and took a home run away from him, but couldn't hang on to the ball. And that allowed Mayer to score the third run of that third inning. 1-0 pitch, strike, 1-1. One one. But that was a fantastic sight today to see all those youngsters here competing. 1-1 one one pitch, comes inside and misses two balls and a strike. Breaking ball, Anna Beauty dropped it on the outside corner, two and two the count. So trying for his second straight one, two, three inning. Grant winds and delivers and a line drive base hit into center field. Overton fields it on a couple of hops and wheels it back to the infield. Second hit for Owenby. First one extended his hitting streak to six. And the inning will continue for Christian Bailey. Number eight, Christian Bailey. He's one for two. He's singled in that three-run third. Started to, to say this, kind of rushed through it in the first inning when he swung and grounded out on the first pitch. Takes a breaking ball that misses ball one. But he leads this team in batting average. He leads them in hits, doubles, triples, and RBIs. He's having a fine season. Only one home run, but 34 runs batted in. He might have just hit his second. Back to the wall is Grote. It is gone. Home second home run allowed by Sherman in the game. A two-out, two-run shot. And suddenly it's now a 5-1 game. Carter went back, stopped about the middle of the warning track, and then went back to the wall leaping, but it was too far out of his reach. RBI's 35 and 36 for Bailey, and it's a 5-1 ETSU lead here in the fifth. So he had Owen being a 2-2 count, gave up the base hit to him, and then Bailey takes him deep. First pitch to Caleb Longley, missed low ball one. Longley is 0 for 2. He's grounded to second and struck out swinging. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. One ball and one strike. Grant winds and delivers. Hard hit ground ball to short. Heatner to his left. Gobbles it up, throws him out. 
and the inning is over. But they put two more on the board on the two out long ball off the bat of Christian Bailey. And we are halfway through the first game of this three game SOCON series. 5 1 ETSU. This is the Furman IMG Sports Network. When it comes to commercial vehicles, break through the clutter with a new Sprinter Worker from Freightliner. Otherwise, your work van isn't getting it done. The Sprinter Worker carries over a ton and a half with over 300 cubic feet of space and on match safety. It starts at just $32,495 with a service interval of up to 20,000 miles. Huge capacity starting at just $32,495. From Christopher Trucks, Whitehorse at I-85, ChristopherTrucks.com. Spirit Communications, built for your business and the upstate's choice for voice, data, internet, and fiber services. Let us show you the future with our cutting-edge, unified cloud-based products backed with live 24-7 customer support. Call 517-1200 or click spiritcom.com. Spirit Communications is a proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. Spirit Communications, keeping you connected. Furman's task got a little tougher after that two-run homer by Bailey in the top of the fifth. Now trailing by four, five, one. Two, three, and four in the lineup. Carter Grote, Jason Costa, Sky Overton against Ryan Simpler. He has allowed three hits. Has struck out four. And has walked two. Grote two for two with a and RBI is driven in the lone run with an infield hit in the second inning. And he swings and hits one in the air to left, way up in the air. Strickland started back, now comes in a few steps and puts it away. One pitch, one out. Well, Mercer has come back to tie the Citadel. 5-5 with the Bears batting in the top of the ninth in Charleston. Bottom third in Spartanburg. Sanford and Wofford tied two apiece. And top of the third in Columbus, Ohio. UNCG out of conference, leading 2 0 at Ohio State. Here's Costa, who's walked and bounced out to second. He takes a breaking ball for a strike. Simpler winds and delivers. And he just missed the outside corner, one and one. Pitching and strike two called. That was a spot he wanted on the 0-1, didn't get. He got it there. It's a ball and two strikes. Sky Overton on deck. If anybody gets on, Cam Whitehead would hit. And the one-two. Strike three swinging. Breaking ball. Down and away. Five of them now for Simpler. And with two down and nothing going on here, Sky Overton, one for two, singled his last time up, leading off the third. Ended up getting pushed around to third base, but was left stranded there when John Michael Boswell lined out to the mound. So here's the first pitch from Simpler and a ground ball over the mound and he gets into center field for a base hit. Four hits for the Paladins. Overton has two of them. Well, they got a two out base hit and then a home run. Let's see if Cam Whitehead might be able to duplicate that after Grote flied to left. Costa Struck out swinging, Overton singles up the middle, and now Whitehead is 0 for 2. Strike out and a strike out and a foul fly to right. First pitch. Outside ball one. Ryander with the set, the 1-0 pitch. Foul out of play. One ball, one strike. Simpler's only allowed four home runs and now 
I believe, 63 in the third innings as we play. Keeps the ball in the ballpark. Misses with a breaking ball up and in. It's two and one. Sims Griffith on deck. 5-1 ETSU, bottom of the fifth. Two one pitch. And there's a shot. Deep left field. How about that? Gone. Home run, Cam Whitehead. He jumped all over an off-speed breaking ball and shot that baby out of here halfway up the hill and straight away left field. And what's good enough in the top of the fifth? Good enough in the bottom of the fifth. It's a two-run game again at 5-3. Home run number four, RBIs 13 and 14. And for Cam Whitehead, that's his first home run in ages. February 25th, as a matter of fact. Almost two full months. Here's Sims Griffith. He takes it down and away. Ball one. Sims has bounced out twice. Once to second, once to first unassisted. And he rolls to the second baseman, Rowland again, who throws him out, and the inning is over. But two-run home run by Whitehead, and it's right back to a two-run game again at 5-3. And we'll be back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. There's a reason why year after year more people trust Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, see Dan Joyner Realtors, to get the job done. It's because we deliver the highest level of real estate services with the utmost integrity, quality, and professionalism. We love what we do, and it shows in every transaction. We've been the undisputed upstate market leader for over 20 years because we do what's right, we handle every transaction with a smile, and we're committed to making your home journey the best it can be. For your best move ever, contact Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. See Dan Joyner Realtors today. Visit cdanjoyner.com and let's get started. Top of the sixth inning. Powellins down two again after Cam Whitehead answered the Bailey home run in the top of the fifth inning with a two-run shot of his own in the bottom. So now Sherman will face six, seven, and eight, Smith, Rowland, and Strickland. First pitch is a breaking ball in the dirt. Ball one, Cullen Smith is singled and flied to left and two times up. Lefty versus left-handed batter. Crawford about two steps beyond the cutout, way off the line at third, and Sherman delivers a strike. The 1-1, strike two called on the inside corner. And Grant ahead now on a ball and two strikes. And he struck him out swinging, but the ball gets away from Whitehead, rolls all the way over to the third base dugout. And Smith will reach first base. So a strikeout and a wild pitch. That's number six for Sherman, but it does not result in an out. So Blake Rowlett will bat with the runner at first. He has struck out and flied to left and his two times up. Greensboro's added two more runs in the top of the third. They lead at Ohio State 4-0 now. That pitch misses outside to the left-handed batter, 0-1. 
Crawford again out beyond the cutout, but in on the grass for Rowlett, the left-handed batter. And he swings and grounds it. Diving stop by Griffith. Underhands a second for one on to first. Not in time. That's a heck of a play by Griffith. Diving, moving toward the middle of the diamond. Quickly from his stomach, flipped to Hebner in the relay. A bang, bang play at first, and Rowlett just beat it. So Fielder's Choice has Rowlett at first, and Put a star by that one, Mike Griffith. That's a heck of a play to get the force and very nearly turn it into a double play. Here's Strickland, who singled and scored and struck out looking, and he takes it down and away, ball one. Five three, Powell and Strelland. Pitch. Swing and a miss at a good breaking ball. Rowlett edging a little further off the bag and Sherman will drive him back with a throw. One ball, one strike. Pitch. Outside corner to knee, strike two. And Grant ahead now, ball and two strikes. Misses in the dirt. Two and two the count. Rowlett at first, one down. We're in the top of the sixth inning. ETSU batting leading 5-3 in this first of three between these teams. Pitch is swung on and popped down the right field line. That is a foul ball. Just a flare that Boswell couldn't get to. Unfortunately, it dropped a foot or so in the foul territory. They've gone to the 10th in Charleston, tied 5-5. Mercer in the Citadel. Sanford and Wofford, 3-3 in the bottom of the fourth. Western Carolina won earlier today, beating VMI 9-1 up in Cullowee. 2-2 pitch again. And he reaches for another one and lines it foul off of the wall at the near side of the dugout, first base side. This is pitch number 95 coming up for Sherman. And he struck him out swinging. Off-speed pitch down. Two down. That's seven strikeouts for Sherman. And now Hunter Parker, who's put down a sacrifice bunt and struck out swinging. And time called as Caleb Davis, the pitching coach, going to come out and talk to his left-hander. 96 pitches now, so this is probably going to be his last inning. And really, you look at it, yeah, they've got nine hits, but he's only made two mistake pitches, and unfortunately, both of them been hit out of the park. Actually, three. The third one was on its way out of the park it appeared, at least from where I'm sitting, and Carter Grote went above the wall and brought it back in, couldn't handle it, and it turned into an RBI double. That's the thing about this ballpark, and Brett's talked about it a number of times, although the, the home run that Chris Cook hit would have been out in pretty much any park we play in, but the one that Bailey hit probably is caught on the warning track in many of the other parks around the league. 
Meeting over, and that pitch is taken outside for a ball by the left-handed batter. But it also benefits the Paladins, of course, offensively here. And you deal with it. 1-0 pitch. Strike on the outside corner. One and one. Gary Swanson, the home plate umpire, gave it a good long look and then finally decided to fire out the right hand. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball stays high. 2-1. Two outs. Rowlett at first. Number nine hitter Hunter Parker at the plate. The 2-1. Swing and a miss at another good off-speed breaking ball, and Sherman evens it up at 2-2. Two and two. Grant steps back on the rubber, looks into Whitehead as he hangs the sign. And the break-even pitch to Parker, chopped or flared rather up the middle, and it's caught by Heedner out behind second. And the inning is over. So they leave a runner here in the sixth, and we move to the bottom of the sixth. 5-3, Paladins trailing it. This is the Furman IMG Sports Network. You can party hardy at your next Paladin tailgate extravaganza with ABC Party Rentals and Amusements. ABC can set you up with tents, chairs, tables, even Furman table linens to let everyone know your blood runneth purple. How about some inflatables or mechanical rides for the kids to really make it special? ABC Party Rentals is conveniently located near Woodruff Road and I-385. When you tailgate at a Furman football game, do it right with ABC Party rentals and amusements. Don't wait. Check them out now at abcgreenville.com. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, The Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, The Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and of course their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made-from-scratch desserts, and don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm-fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest that is the Hungry Drover. Bottom third of the order for the Paladins here in the sixth. Boswell, Hebner, and Crawford against Ryan Simpler. And the first pitch to Boswell is in there for a strike. Boswell has reached on an error and scored and has lined back to the mound. That was with a runner at third and two outs. Breaking ball stays inside. Of course, Boswell, again, if you're not with us, getting to start at first base because Brandon Elmy, who was hit on the knee by a pitch on Wednesday, had the thing really swell up and stiffen on him, and he just doesn't have the mobility right now. Ground ball backhanded in the hole by the shortstop, and his throw from the outfield grass gets Boswell, and there's one out. Nice play by Chris Cook. So now Hebner, who's lined to center and struck out swinging in his two times up. That was the 89th. Let's see, where are we here? Actually, that's over 90 pitches now for Simpler in there. Nobody throwing yet, but there's some rustling around down in their bullpen. First pitch to Hebner was a ball. And he takes that one on the inside corner of strike. One and one. This will be pitch number 94, in fact, for the right-hander. Off-speed pitch high. Two and one. Simpler's 2-1 pitch. Must have been inside. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Three and one. So Hebner trying to become a one-out base runner, the 3-1. And it's on the inside corner of strike. That was 
looked significantly worse than the pitch he called for ball three. So three and two the count. Right-hander winds in the payoff pitch. And it's high and away, ball four. Everybody held a breath just for a moment. That's the third walk for Simpler. And now Jake Crawford, who's reached on an error and struck out looking. Number seven, Jake Crawford. Crawford waiting a simple or throw to first. Now the big right-hander bringing it. And Crawford, a breaking ball, and he chops it foul to the far end of the third base dugout. Wind continuing to whip in. Mostly blowing straight in. The only balls that get any help, or maybe we should say aren't really hurt by the wind, they're hit in the air, balls to left field, and we've seen three home runs hit the left field in the game. Two by the Bucks and Whitehead's long ball for the Paladins. 0-1 to Crawford. Outside. One ball and one strike. Simpler has struck out five. He's walked three. This pitch coming up here will be number 100 of the evening. 1-1. One, one. Line drive. Right center field. That's going to be in for a hit. It's going to split the gap and go all the way to the wall. Heedner on his way to third. They're going to wave him around as Mayer has trouble picking it up on the track. Into third goes Crawford. An RBI triple, and it's a one-run ball game, 5-4. Crawford's 16th run batted into the season. Hebner scores all the way from first, and the Paladins have the tying run at third now with one out for Jabari Richards. Richards 0 for 2, is struck out, walked, and bounced out to the first baseman unassisted. They're going to pull the infield in. And the first pitch, line drive, right field, fair ball. Into the corner, that'll score the tying run. Richards rounding second on his way to third, and he'll be in sliding, no throw. Back-to-back -back triples on consecutive pitches, and the Paladins have tied it up. He threw a shoe in turn two. Halfway between first and second, had a blowout. It didn't stop him. One shoe and one sock was enough to get him to third base. And now the Paladins have the go-ahead run at third. Still just one out, and Carter Grode at the plate. For Jabari, that's his second triple of the year. And here comes pitching coach Chris Gordon. Just now getting some action in their bullpen, so. I don't know how much time they can buy here, but wouldn't appear ready to make a pitching change yet. For Crawford, by the way, that was his first triple of the season. And until Jake got that one, the only person in the lineup today other than Carter Grote who had a triple was Richards. Jabari now has two and Carter, as he steps to the plate, has five of them on the year. So the meeting is over. Furman has come off the mat to tie it. And they've got the go ahead run at third with one out. The infield again will come in and Carter Grode, who's two for three with an RBI. Simpler's first pitch to him is down and in a ball. Paladins this season, with a runner at third and less than two outs, have been able to get him in 
almost 58% of the time. Swing and a miss. Ball rolls out on the grass in front of the plate, but obviously no advancement. That number obviously needs to be quite a bit higher. And for Grote, in just such situations, well, if I could find again the right stat sheet, here's the 1-1 one, one in the dirt again, two balls and a strike. The runner at third and less than two outs. Grote has gotten the run home five times in nine tries. Ahead in the count, two and one pitch. And there's a line drive down the left field line. That is going to be in for extra bases, one hopping off the wall. Richards trots home. Grote high steps it into second base. His third hit, his second run batted in, and Furman leads it for the first time, six to five. Thirty-one RBIs for Carter Grote. And now Jason Costa here. The last three hitters, it's been batting practice off of Ryan Simpler. Two triples and a double, and it all came after Boswell grounded out to begin the inning, and then Hebner walked on a 3-2 pitch. Crawford triples to the gap in right center. Richards triples down the right field line, and Grote a one-hop double off the wall down the left field line. And now Costa 0 for 2 with a walk. Here comes Tony Skoll. And that is going to be all for one Ryan Simpler. So the Paladins have chased the ETSU ace. And we'll be back to tell you about the new pitcher after this. Atlanta Bread Company call to the bullpen. Back in a moment on the Furman IMG Sports Network. The Atlanta Bread Company wants to make your dining experience as convenient as possible, especially if you're ordering takeout. Go online to atlantabreadcompany.com, place your order there, and pay for it too. Then, when you get to the restaurant at Cherry Dell Point, you breeze right by the cash registers and go straight to the pickup counter where your food will be waiting. And speaking of food, try the new Shrimp Po' Boy, a delicious and surprisingly healthy addition to the already great menu. That's the Atlanta Bread Company, Cherry Dell Point in Greenville. Let me tell you something, Cowboy. This rookie can really bring the heat. He's smoky and spicy with a Chipotle style all his own. It's a new Montgomery Inn Chipotle barbecue sauce. Make it a part of your home team. Available now at your neighborhood grocer or online at cincyfavorites.com. New pitcher for the Bucks is right-hander Dylan Kate, 5'10". 185 pound red shirt junior is Sevierville, Tennessee native. Kate on the season making his 15th appearance. No record and a 276 earned run average. 16 in the third innings in relief, 16 hits, nine runs, only five earned. Has struck out 22, walked nine, and opponents hitting 242 against him. Just watching him warm up here. He's Got a good fastball. And it looks like he throws a straight change off of it. Simpler, five and a third innings, eight hits, six runs so far, five earned, and growed out at second his responsibility. Walk three, struck out five, and threw 105 pitches. So Furman, who trailed five to one, has come all the way back. Got two in the fifth on the Whitehead homer. Three so far here in the sixth to take the lead, 6-5. And perhaps not done yet as Costa will come to the plate. 0 for 2 with a walk. So Costa settling in. And Kate, ready to go to work on him. Checks the runner at second, his first pitch. He has a fastball low, ball one. So 
all of a sudden now Grant Sherman is in line for a win, but we got a long way to go in this one. Inside, two balls and no strikes. Outfield straight away. Big hole on the left side. You've got Cook, the shortstop, trying to keep Groat close at second and down at third. Smith, a step or two toward the line. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Good slider. Costa came up empty. Two and one. Now Parker in center will move over towards the gap in right center. Long pause, the 2 1 pitch. Came back with the fastball up and in, and Costa swung through it. It's 2 and 2. Sky Overton on deck. 6 5 Paladins as we play here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Three runs in. Grote at second, just one down. And a bluff back to second base. Now the right-hander pauses at the belt. His 2-2 pitch. And he bounced the slider up there. Three and two to Costa. So he's run the count full on the Furman DH here this evening. And a payoff pitch on the way. And a fly ball back in the left, chasing his Strickland toward the line, diving. Did he get it? He did. Wow, what a play by Jammer Strickland. Took extra bases away from Costa and saved a run. Put a star by that one. That is one heck of a play by the Buccaneer left fielder. So two down. Now Sky Overton will bat. He's two for three in his score to run. He singled with two out in the last inning and rode home on the two run homer by Whitehead. Now Strickland apparently hurt himself on the catch. The trainer and head coach Tony Skoll going out to left field. They're looking at left arm, left wrist. Yeah, they're looking at his left wrist. He dove full out. That, of course, is glove hand, the, can the hand he made the catch with. And got the binoculars on it, and the trainer is working on that thing now, and Strickland explaining to him and his head coach exactly what happened. He apparently feels like he can stay in the game, he will. And Skoll and the trainer will jog back to the dugout. So with two down, Strickland saving a run. It'll be Sky Overton. Sky with two hits in three times. And a two out base hit here would bring in another run. Pitch is inside, ball one. <laughs> Brad Pochard down there playing traffic cop with all those seven and eight year old baseball players of his. <laughs> One ball, no strikes. Pitch. Check swing on a pitch down. They appeal down to first base umpire Gary Keller. He says he did not go. Two and oh. Inning began with Boswell bouncing to short. Actually a good play by Cook backhanding and throwing him out from the outfield grass. Hebner walked. Crawford tripled him in to make it 5-4. Richards tripled down the right field line to make it 5-5. Five, five. 
and then Grote doubled in Richards to make it 6-5. That was all for Simpler. Kate comes out of the bullpen, goes 3-2 and two on Costa, who lines to left, and Strickland diving to the line makes the catch to take away a hit and save a run. And now Overton at the plate with two down. Kate bringing it, and it's low. Three balls and one strike. Whitehead on deck. Sky waiting as Kate gets the sign from Owen B. The 3 1. Line drive, right field, base hit. Over toward the line to get it is Mayer. Here comes Grote. He'll score as the throw heads into second base. RBI single for Overton. It's a 7 5 Paladin lead. Third hit for Sky. Fourth hit in the inning. And the Paladins have put up a four spot here, and Whitehead will bat with two down. He's the eighth man to hit in the inning. One for three, but that one was a big one. It started the road back from the 5-1 deficit. In the bottom of the fifth, after in the top of the fifth, Christian Bailey hit a two-out, two-run homer to make it 5-1. Whitehead answered in the bottom with a two-out, two-run shot of his own to get it back to a two-run game. Fouls the first pitch out here. And then you've got the four runs so far in this inning. And you can now close the book on one Ryan Simpler. Five and a third, eight hits, seven runs, six of them earned. Three walks, five strikeouts. The 0-1, swing and a miss at a breaking ball. And Whitehead down, no balls and two strikes. Owen B came up like he was going to throw to first and Overton went diving back to the bag. Hits are even at nine. Howlins lead 7-5. No balls and two strikes on Whitehead. Kate pitching. And strike three called. Fastball painted the outside corner. And the inning is over, but a big inning for the home team as they put a four spot on the board. And after six, Furman now on top, 7-5. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Everyone wants to save money. Greenville Heritage Federal Credit Union's sweetheart deal will put more cash in your pocket every month. Refinance your current car loan or finance a new car in February and get a 2% rate discount and 60 days with no payment. With rates as low as 1.99%, you could save hundreds of dollars in payments and interest. Call 370-5670 or visit GreenvilleHeritage.com to find out how much you can save. Federally insured by NCUA. Hey, you want to go to Bojangles? Sure. Oh, come on. The Bojangler Fish Filet Sandwich is back. I just said I wanted to go. It's a light, flaky, wild-caught Alaskan Pollock Filet. I know. I love the Bojangler. Served on a toasted, buttered bun, and it's only here for a limited time at participating restaurants, so you have to come. You know what? You've convinced me. People tell me I'm very persuasive. I bet they do. The Bojangler Fish Filet Sandwich is back. Try one today. Bojangles, it's Bojangler time. Six inning totals, Furman seven runs, nine hits, no errors. They've left seven. ETSU five runs, nine hits, three errors. They've stranded four. Day is done for Grant Sherman. Six innings, nine hits, five runs earned. Struck out seven, didn't walk anybody, and threw 101 pitches. And thanks to that four-run bottom of the sixth, right now he's the pitcher of record. All he can do is win it. He cannot lose it. And it'll be up to the bullpen over the final three innings. And first out is the Florida product, Will Dvorak, the senior. 
Devo making his seventh appearance, no record, and even three earned run average. Six innings, six hits, two runs earned. Has struck out three, walked four. And the reality with Devo is if he's got good command and he throws strikes, he's successful. Top of the order, Cook, Mayer, and Owenby. And the first pitch, a big breaking ball, and Cook way out in front of it and pulled it foul. Cook has doubled, hit a two-run homer, and flied to right in his three times up. Dvorak works from the stretch full time. The 0-1, and a change up in the dirt. One ball, one strike. And Mercer has scored a run in the top of the 10th. They lead the Citadel 6-5. 1-1, misses down and in. Sanford and Wofford still tied at three in the bottom of the fifth. And Greensboro has jumped out to a 6-0 lead now in Ohio State in Columbus. 2-1 pitch. Off-speed pitch, line to left. Groat going back, going back, can't get it. One hopping off the wall. Wills it back to second, and the throw not in time. And that's a leadoff double for Chris Cook, his third hit of the game, and that's how their seventh inning starts. Got an off-speed pitch up just out of Groat's reach. He fielded it on one bounce off the wall, turned and right. fired to second. Looked for a moment like they might have a shot, but as it turned out, Cook able to get in ahead of the cut and the throw by Hebner. So now here's Aaron Mayer, one for three with a run scored. Left-handed batter. And Devo's first pitch to him. High ball one. Of course, again, a long way to go here in this one, but should the Paladins go on to win this, they would move out of a tie with VMI. Move into sixth in the league. Line drive center, Overton moving over, got it, one out. Mayer hit it hard, but Overton moving. To his right, he was shading him a bit towards the gap in right center, ended up catching it almost straight away center field. Here's Owenby, two for three with an RBI and a run score. VMI's already lost today. 9-1, it's a final now in Charleston. Mercer escapes again. They're now 12-1 in the league. 6-5, the final there. Devo's first pitch to Owenby. Big breaking ball that misses outside, 1-0. So the Citadel now is 3-7. VMI is 4-9. One zero pitch, low and away, two and zero. Cook out at second, one out. The lead off two base hit. The two zero pitch, big breaking ball stays high. It's three and zero. Got Bailey on deck. Now Owen B steps out. Now back in. Dvorak behind three balls and no strikes. Pitching. And there's a fastball strike one call. Seven five Paladins, top of the seventh. DTSU with a runner at second and a tying run at the plate. And Hagen Owenby, the preseason player of the year. Ground ball, pass to Diving Crawford into left field, a base hit. They're going to bring the runner to the plate. Oh, the throw was off target. If it was on target, they would have had Cook. And because the throw came through, 
Owen be able to make his way to second base. It's a one-run game in the tying run in scoring position. Third hit for Owenby. His second run batted into the game. He moves up to second on the throw, and here comes Brett Harker, and he has already signaled to the bullpen. So a break in the action. That's all for Dvorak, and another Atlanta Bread Company call to the pen back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. The Atlanta Bread Company wants to make your dining experience as convenient as possible, especially if you're ordering takeout. Go online to atlantabreadcompany.com, place your order there, and pay for it too. Then, when you get to the restaurant at Cherry Dell Point, you breeze right by the cash registers and go straight to the pickup counter where your food will be waiting. And speaking of food, try the new Shrimp Po' Boy, a delicious and surprisingly healthy addition to the already great menu. That's the Atlanta Bread Company, Cherry Dell Point in Greenville. Let me tell you something, Cowboy. This rookie can really bring the heat. He's smoky and spicy with a Chipotle style all his own. It's a new Montgomery Inn Chipotle barbecue sauce. Make it a part of your home team. Available now at your neighborhood grocer or online at CincyFavorites.com. Dvorak gone after a third of an inning and two hits, a run. And now it's Heath Hawkins coming out of the Palomans bullpen. Sophomore, the Charlotte native, making his 16th appearance all in relief. Two and three, a 540 earned run average, has a save. He got that on Wednesday night. Came in in the eighth inning. What was a four run game at the time and faced the or when he came in, the tying run was in the on-deck circle. He comes in here with Owenby at second, one out, a run in to cut Furman's lead to 7-6. And Christian Bailey, the cleanup hitter, due up. Women's lacrosse beat Stetson across campus today, 19-14. 10-4 on the year, 6-1 in the Atlantic Sun. Abby Shields, five goals, five assists. There's school record single season points in a single game for 10. All right, Hawkins ready. Here's Bailey, who's bounced to second, singled and hit a two-run home run in the fifth, his second homer of the year. Now 36 RBIs to lead the team. Tying run at second. And Hawkins ready. First pitch, swing and a miss. He was trying to give them the lead. Big swing at the fastball, 0 and 1. Bailey, a 429 batter with runners in scoring position. Hawkins with the 0 1. Fly ball back into center. Overton will get back, drifting towards right center. He's got it. Two outs, tagging and moving on to third is Owenby. But now with two away, tying run at third. Hawkins will go to work on Caleb Longley, the DH, who's 0 for 3. Pair of ground outs. Sandwiched around a swinging strikeout. And time called as pitching coach Caleb Davis will make his way out. Just a reminder, the Brett Harker Show comes at you on Monday from Shortfields in downtown Traveler's Rest, 6 p.m. Have it on Campus FM 95.9 on FermanPowellands.com via Stretch Audio, and we stream it live on Facebook via the Dan Scott Show page. So that's Monday at 6 o'clock. 
four shows left in the year. We hope to see you there. All right, meeting breaks up. And now Hawkins will work from the windup with two outs. Longley, a right-handed batter, 0 for 3. Tying run at third. And the first pitch, a fastball, strike one call. The 0-1. Just outside with that one. One ball and one strike. Outfield straight away for the right-handed batter. Infield is back all the way around. Swing and a miss at a good slider down. And Hawkins ahead one and two. Trying to preserve the one-run lead here in the top of the seventh inning. Heath winds and delivers. And a fly ball back into left. Groat, warning track. Wall, got it. Inning over. Longley just missed his eighth of the year. Hawkins gets the job done. They get a run. Strand the tying run at third, and we've hit the seventh inning stretch. Furman on top, 7-6. You're listening to the Furman IMG Sports Network. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, The Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, The Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and of course their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made from scratch desserts, and don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest that is the Hungry Drover. If you've been sidelined with an injury, sore joint, or back pain, the experts of Piedmont Orthopedic Associates can offer you both surgical and non-surgical care to get you moving again. Piedmont Orthopedic Associates 15 surgeons and two spine physicians are all board certified and are committed to providing you with excellent orthopedic care. Visit us online at getmovingwithpoa.com. Kate on for his first full inning of work. He came on in the last inning. Gave up a RBI single to Overton. Got the final two outs of the inning. So it'll be six, seven, and eight. Sims Griffith was the only man not to bat in that four run. Seventh inning, now the lead at one, seven, six. Let's see if Paladin's offense can answer. Kate working from the windup, delivers, and Griffith hits one deep down the left field line. That one is foul. Turned on the first pitch. Couldn't keep it straight. So a long strike, going one. Griffith 0 for three, a pair of ground balls to second. He's bounced out to first. Kate's 0-1 pitch. And a strike called on the inside corner. 0-2. Southern Conference got a, in, in general, and Samford Athletics in particular got a chance to kind of hold its chest out in pride today. Ball inside. His former Bulldog center fielder Phillip Urban was called up to the big leagues by the Reds today. Cincinnati's 
first pick in the 2013 draft, 27th overall. Here's a line drive back into left field. That's going to be one hopping off the wall, and Griffith will coast into second base with a leadoff double. His first hit, number 10 for the Paladins. And now Boswell, who's 0 for 3, has reached on an error and scored a run. So a chance to get that run back that the Bucks got in the top of the seventh inning. And the first pitch to Boswell. Swings and a flare. Right center field. It's in for a base hit. Griffith had to hold up to make sure Parker wasn't going to get there. He advances to third. And the Paladins have him on the corners with nobody out for Brett Hebner. Hebner is lined to center, struck out swinging, and started the four-run sixth inning by drawing a one-out base on balls and scored a moment later when Crawford tripled into the gap in right center field. Hits are even at 11. Boswell's second hit of the year. He'll keep the middle of the infield back. As Hebner takes a strike on the inside corner. Of course, the first baseman, Bailey, holding on the runner. And at third, Smith, right now about even with the bag, maybe a step inside as he moves in a bit. No balls in a strike to Hebner. Pitch. Swing and a miss at a pitch down and in. He's behind 0-2. He's got a big hole in the left side to shortstop Cook, shading him up the middle. Hebner steps out to try and collect himself. Now back in. The 0-2 pitch. Here it comes. And he struck him out swinging. Fastball away. And Hebner down on strikes for the second time. One out. Second strikeout for Kate. And now Jake Crawford, one for three. But that one, as mentioned, the RBI triple in the last inning that drove in the first of the four runs. He would then score on the next pitch when Richards tripled into the right field corner. So now a double play would get him out of the inning without anybody scoring. And a bunt. That third base side of the mound. Kate recovered late, through late, and throws it away at the plate. The run scores, and the Powells will end up with runners at second and third. Kate reached for it once, didn't get it cleanly. Griffith then broke to the plate. Kate looked to first, and then at the last minute turned and threw home and threw wildly. So how are we scoring that? Bunt single, no RBI. So a bunt single for Crawford. No RBI. Griffith scores on the throwing here. The good throw at the plate would have had him easily. So it's eight to six. Boswell came all the way around the third. Crawford hustling to second, infield in. Here's Richards, one for three with that triple, and a run scored. Drove in a run on the three-base hit. He's also drawn a walk, takes a pitch outside a ball. So a chance to put a little daylight between the Paladins and the Bucks if he can get one pass to draw in infield here. The 1-0. Breaking ball misses outside, one and one the count. 8-6, Furman, bottom of the seventh inning. A chance for another big inning here. Kate shakes off a sign from OMB. The 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss. It's a great big swing. Richards right now just needs to be thinking contact. 
puts it in play, chances are good things are going to happen. Two and one the count. Pitch. And he swings and misses again. And he was spinning on that one. He was trying to hit that ball over the scoreboard and right. He will walk away from the plate, adjust his batting gloves, take a practice swing, and settle back in. Carter Grode on deck. Now time called as Jabari will step out and tie his shoe. Two balls and two strikes. Boswell at third, Crawford at second. One out, and the infield is drawn in. Richards back in and waiting as Kate comes set at the belt. The 2-2 pitch struck him out swinging. Well, he just kept taking big swing after big swing in a situation there where Quite simply, if he just makes contact, especially contact on the ground, it's about 75% in his favor that it's going to get through and score two runs. Now the infield will back up, and Carter Grote will bat. He's got three hits in the game, including a double. He's driven in two runs and scored once. OMB will go out. And you go back to last year, we talked about Carter's success against this team a year ago. He was seven for 11 in four games. He's three for four today. You've got first base open. If you're Tony Skoll, why in the world would you pitch to Carter Grode in this situation? And let's see. They're not going to. They're going to put him on. And the first pitch lobbed back over the plate but was high. So they're going to walk Grote to load the bases for Costa. There's ball two. Costa was the first batter that Dylan Kate faced when he came on in the last inning. And it took a diving catch by Jammer Strickland in left field to take extra bases and an RBI away from him. So there's ball four. Groat will trot on down to first base and Costa will bat with the bases loaded. I believe the Paladins have a single Grand Slam home run this year, and the guy at the plate has it. Came against a loss, or in a loss against Butler. First pitch, and he swings and a fly ball to right center field. Coming over is Parker. He'll put it away, and the inning is over. So the Paladins get a run, but they miss a chance for much, much more in the inning. Leave the bases loaded for the second time in the game after seven. Paladins on top, 8-6 here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Stuck in a state of falling behind? Struggling to keep up with your kids, finances, insurance? Then let State Farm agent Steve Borkland in Traveler's Rest help you simplify and get to a better state. Because with Steve handling your auto, home, and life insurance, you'll have more time for everything else. More money, too. Because adding State Farm policies could mean earning discounts worth up to 40%. That's money Steve can help you put towards a college savings plan. Call State Farm agent Steve Borkland today and get to a better state with State Farm. At SC Telco Federal Credit Union, we're passionate about helping to improve the financial lives of our members. SC Telco is the first financial institution in South Carolina to offer a price link savings account. The Save to Win account allows members to save money, earn interest, and have the chance to win cash prizes. When you're in front of us, you're the only person that matters. Find a location near you at sctelco.com. SC Telco looks forward to serving you. SC Telco is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Top of the eighth, Heath Hawkins 
and will begin his first full inning of work. He came on to get the last two outs in the seventh and strand the tying run in scoring position. And again, the Paladins got a run there, but you hope the inability to capitalize on second and third and one out against a drawn in infield doesn't come back to haunt him here. Six, seven, and eight do up Smith, Rowlett, and Strickland. So whoever pitches the ninth, if Hawkins has an easy inning here, is going to have to face at the minimum the top two in their order again. But let's see what unfolds here in the eighth. Cullen Smith is one for three. He's been on twice, though, reached on a strikeout that turned into a wild pitch, and he fouls the first pitch away down the left field line, 0-1. Singled back in the second as also fly to left. Furman's now left 10 men on. And they've left the bases loaded twice. Outside, one ball, one strike. Ohio State trying to come back now. They've put four on the board and trail Greensboro 7-4. One, one, breaking ball in for a strike, it's one and two. And Wofford has taken a one-run lead and still batting in the bottom of the sixth. They lead Samford 5-4 up in Spartanburg. 1-2 pitch to the left-handed batter, and it's off the plate outside a little high, too. Two and two. Hawkins winds and the break-even pitch. Just misses outside. Three and two the count to the ETSU third baseman. Leading it off here in the eighth inning. Payoff pitch and a foul pop down beyond third. Crawford gave it a look but couldn't get there. So we'll do the payoff all over again. Smith settling back in. The three, two is high and away, ball four. That is the first walk issued by Furman pitching in the game. And it comes leading off the eighth inning. So now Blake Rowlett, who's 0 for 3. So Hawkins will go back to the stretch. And another left-handed batter in there. First pitch is on the outside corner at the knees, strike one. would be an awfully good time for a double play ground ball. The 0-1, high and away. One ball, one strike. Furman leads it 8-6 as we play here in the top of the eighth inning. Lead off man aboard for the Bucks, And that breaking ball stays outside. Two and one. Rowlett has grounded into a pair of double plays on the season. Hawkins with the two one pitch. Misses badly down and in and Whitehead saved a wild pitch with a Desperate backhanded knockdown. And it's three balls and a strike. This club is too good offensively to be walking guys, especially late in the ball game. 
They're hitting 318 as a team. They have 11 hits here today. And every guy you put on, you get closer to the top of that order and having to go deeper into it. Line drive into left center field. Nobody's going to get that one. It's in the gap all the way to the wall. Overton wheeling it back in. And they have the tying runs in scoring position with nobody out on the opposite field double. When you get behind three and one and have to come with a fastball, oftentimes that is the result. So Hawkins with his feet to the fire here. Jammer Strickland, the left fielder, is due up. Tony Skoll coming out. Is it going to be a pinch runner or a pinch hitter? Looks like a pinch hitter is coming to the plate. Strickland will be taken down, and in his place comes Brock Beeler. Your attention plays down, pinch hitting for ATSU. Freshman right hander number 19, Brock Beeler. Beeler on the season, 0 for 6. Hawkins will work from the windup with runners at second and third and nobody out. And a first pitch breaking ball drops in for a strike, 0 1. Hunter Parker, the number nine batter and center fielder, is on deck. The 0 1 pitch. Strike two. Good fastball right in there. And Hawkins now ahead, no balls and two strikes. Heath gets the sign from Whitehead. His 0-2. Strike three swinging. Slider away, three pitches, and see you later. One out. Now Parker, 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. Three quarters of the infield will play deep. Crawford well off the line, a couple of steps beyond the cutout, but at the edge of the grass for the left-handed batter, who swings the first pitch and fouls it back. No balls and a strike. Chris Cook, the leadoff hitter, who has two doubles and a two-run homer tonight on deck. Ground ball left side, backhanded by Hebner. Throws back to second, and they got the runner there. Run scores, but Hebner a heads-up play as the runner at second, Rowlett, strayed too far off the bag, tried to get back, and Hebner threw to Griffith covering. That is a big, big out because not only is it the second out of the inning, but it takes a runner out of scoring position. So Parker gets an RBI fielder's choice, but Rowlett is out six to four, and now here is Cook with a runner at first and two down, and it's high, ball one. Well, hopefully now Hawkins can get Cook and take advantage of a huge base running mistake by Blake Rowlett, the 1-0. Swing and a miss. One and one. Tying run instead of being at second base now is at first with two down. The one one. Swing and a miss again. Fastball up and in. And Hawkins ahead one and two. Heath gets his sign, he straightens up. His one-two pitch, runner goes, it's taken for a ball. Throw down is not in time. Got away from Griffith on the short hop. So a stolen base for Parker. Would have been interesting to see what would have been the call had he held onto the ball. 
trying to pick it on a tough, tough hop. Parker now seven for nine in stolen bases, and now he is a tying run in scoring position and a 2-2 count to Cook. Hawkins pitching, and a little roll to Griffith at second. He'll throw him out, and the inning is over. So under the circumstances, good job by Hawkins to get out of that with only one run scoring. And we head to the bottom of the eighth. Furman still leading at 8-7 here on the Furman IMG Sports Network. When you go in search of a fence company, what's your criteria? Experience? Trust? A company that gets it right the first time and stand behind its work? Then your search is over. Faulkner Fence has been Greenville's fence company for more than 40 years. Ed Faulkner started the business, and now Son Todd continues the tradition of excellence. So regardless of your fencing needs, commercial, industrial, or residential, trust the company that Greenville has trusted for over four decades. Faulkner Fence, 864-271-4626, or online at Faulkner Fence Company. Hi, Furman fans. Dan Scott here for UPS. Your customers want more from your business. You've got to make more happen, whether they're in Greenville or on the other side of the world, globally or locally. UPS is building solutions to help businesses give their customers exactly what they want. More made easy. UPS, the official logistics company of Furman Athletics. Bottom of the eighth, Paladins coming to bat for what they hope will be the final time, and they'll be doing it off of the third pitcher of the night for Tony Skoll's club. Atlanta Bread Company call to the bullpen brings us side-arming right-hander Peyton Taylor. Taylor, six foot, 190-pound redshirt senior. On the year, making his 18th appearance all in relief. Two and one, a 584 earned run average, and has three of their six saves. Brock Beeler stays in the game to play left field. Dylan Kate, inning in two thirds, four hits, one run unearned, a walk, and three strikeouts. So with an 8-7 lead, the Paladins coming to bat here in the eighth inning. Overton, Whitehead, and Griffith. Sky Overton's had himself a heck of a day, a three-hit game. As a matter of fact, his fourth three-hit game of the year. It's his 13th multi-hit game of the season. First pitch, and he's got a four-hit game. Line drive in the left field, a base hit. So that's how the Paladin eight starts. Ties his career high. He had four hits against the Citadel last year down in Charleston. So it'd be really nice if he could get that run around, get that lead beyond just the one run headed to the ninth. Whitehead showing bunt, and he takes it low and away, a breaking ball, or 1-0. and In their ninth, they'll have 2-3-4, and four, Mayer, Owenby, and Bailey. Will it be Hawkins? Will it be Crawford? The 1-0 pitch, he squares again and bunts at first base side, beauty. Only play will be to first as Bailey, the first baseman, underhands to the second baseman, Rowlett, covering. One, uh, three to four on the out. And now a base hit would again make it a two-run game. And here's Griffith who, after grounding out his first three times, doubled leading off the last inning and scored the run. Chance to drive in one here. 
First pitch to him. Down and away, ball one. He's got sizable holes on both sides of the infield. Both middle infielders kind of pinching a little bit. Now they back away as the pitch is being delivered and it's fouled back to the screen, one and one. Furman trying for its fifth win in a row and trying to stop ETSU's five game winning streak. Pitch, swing and a miss. Out in front of that sidearm pitch and it's one ball and two strikes. You hear Brad Harker think the other way. Really pulled badly off that one. John Michael Boswell on deck. One, two pitch. Overton dancing off second, here it comes. And he does reach for it and lines it to the second baseman. Overton heads up base running, was already headed back to the bag. Two down. So now they'll take something with two outs from Boswell, who is one for four. He's reached on an error and scored and had a base hit in the last inning. So let's see if he can find a hole somewhere with two outs. That's an awfully big run out at second base right now. Taylor's first pitch to him. Down and away, and he gets off the mid of Owenby, and that'll bring Overton to third. That'll be a pass ball. Oh, and he goes out and says something to his pitcher. So now, while you still need something with two outs, it's a little easier with the runner 90 feet away. Another one of those, and the run scores. One ball, no strikes to Boswell. Giving him all kinds of room in right center field. And he chops it towards the shortstop. Cook backs from the grass. His throw in time. And that's the inning. So the Paladins get the leadoff man aboard, but can't get him around. And we go to the ninth in a one-run game. Furman on top, 8-7. Back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. Hey, Furman fans, it's baseball season. Here at Ingalls, we know that as you root, root, root for the home team, sometimes you want more than just peanuts and Cracker Jack. And while we do deliver on your favorite ballpark classics, we're proud to offer a packed lineup of everything you need to make your next meal a home run. Ingalls, a proud sponsor of Furman Baseball and the official grocery store of Furman Athletics. Go Dins! The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point offers a dining experience that will have you coming back for more time and time again. Everything is freshly made on site, including the different varieties of bread and all the baked goodies. And the menu, Atlanta Bread Company offers a wide variety from hot soups and chili to hot and cold sandwiches and paninis. Even breakfast selections topped off with your choice of piping hot coffees. Come see for yourself. You'll love it. The Atlanta Bread Company at Cherry Dell Point, proud sponsors of the Furman Paladins and the Dan Scott Show. We go to the ninth. Paladins three outs away from taking game one in this three-game series. Heath Hawkins will stay out there, and he'll be asked to get through two, three, and four. Mayor, Owenby, and Bailey. Eight, seven. Furman leads it. The Paladins this season, three and eight in one run games, but two of those wins came in the first two games against Western Carolina last weekend. So they've won two in a row. Mayer is one for four. Singleton scored in the third. Last time up, he lined out to Overton in center. Left-handed batter and Hawkins' first pitch to him. Way low and outside, ball one. Hebner almost behind the bag at second, shading that far up the middle at short. Strike called on the inside corner. Griffith shading toward the hole, and he's 
a step back on the outfield grass at second. Crawford well off the line at third. Breaking ball strike, it's one and two. Mayer out for a moment, now back in. Hawkins winds his one-two pitch, and he struck him out swinging. Breaking ball down, and there's one out. Second strikeout for Heath. Catcher number 44. That's how you want to face these big guys with nobody on base in a one-run game. Hagen Owenby. Grounded to third, his first time up since then. RBI double, single to run, scored RBI single. Checked a swing, cost him a strike, 0 and 1. Hawkins shakes off a sign. And now Owen B will ask for time and back out. The 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball in there for strike two, and Hawkins again jumping out ahead. No balls and two strikes. Heath working quickly, gets the sign from Whitehead. His 0-2 pitch on the way, and he struck him out swinging on a slider that bounced, and Whitehead throws it away. He lobbed it over the head of Boswell. And despite the strikeout, Owensby reaches. And the tying run is on first base. My goodness. Now Bailey, who's already hit one two-run homer today. He's two for four. Going to shake that off. Right-handed batter, Hawkins back to the, wind, the stretch. And a first pitch swinging, he misses a slider. 0-1. Whitehead, that's his fourth error of the season. Three of them have been on that throw. Two came in the same game. The 0-1, strike two called, a good fastball. And again, Hawkins jumps out on top. No balls and two strikes. Trying to pitch around the miscue. He sets and his 0-2 pitch. And it's lined in the left. Here comes Grode. He has to play it on a hop. And they've got the tying run at second now. Bailey's third hit. And here comes Caleb Longley, the DH, and he's going to get one more chance to extend his hitting streak, which stands at 13, and his consecutive games reaching base streak, which is at 26. He's 0 for 4. And time called is Caleb Davis, the pitching coach, going out to the mound. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner, perhaps, for Owenby, the catcher. Tony Skoll going to home plate umpire. Gary Swanson. And you've got a huddle of players around Skoll now outside their dugout. And as it breaks up, the runner at third will be Seth Cunningham. So Cunningham running for Owenby. And now Longley. 0 for 4. Hawkins' first pitch to him. Swung on and fouled out of play. Well, again, 
nothing has come easy for this team. Why should this be any different? Crawford guarding the line at third. Middle of the infield looking for a double play ground ball and Hawkins will pivot back towards second. Wofford's extended its lead to 7-4 over Sanford. No balls and a strike. Pitch and a ground ball. Fair off the glove of Crawford rolling into foul territory. That's going to score the tying run. The go-ahead run comes to third, and it's an 8-8 ball game. Here comes Brett Harker to argue with Gary Swanson that the ball was foul. Of course, in that alignment, the third base umpire was in the middle of the diamond, so it was Swanson's call. It is an RBI single for Longley to tie the game. Bailey ends up around at third, and they've got him on the corners with one out, and now you've got to worry about the go-ahead run scoring. And here comes Harker, and he's going back to the bullpen. So a break in the action, another Atlanta Bread Company call to the bullpen, and we'll be back in just a moment. The Atlanta Bread Company wants to make your dining experience as convenient as possible, especially if you're ordering takeout. Go online to atlantabreadcompany.com, place your order there, and pay for it too. Then, when you get to the restaurant at Cherry Dell Point, you breeze right by the cash registers and go straight to the pickup counter where your food will be waiting. And speaking of food, try the new Shrimp Po' Boy, a delicious and surprisingly healthy addition to the already great menu. That's the Atlanta Bread Company, Cherry Dell Point in Greenville. When the Furman football team goes on the road, they travel safely, comfortably, and with the latest technology with Jeans Tours and Charters. Jeans has been a Furman favorite for decades and has serviced Furman football for over 20 years. Jeans Tours and Charters of Greenville. For more information on Jeans Tours or to book your next road trip, visit jeansbussvc.com or give them a call at 864-242-1673. Jeans Tours and Charters, serving the upstate of South Carolina since 1980. New pitcher for the Paladins, senior lefty Billy Greenfield, the Philadelphia native, making his 20th appearance of the season. He's 0-1, a 5-13 earned run average and a save. Heath Hawkins, two innings, three hits, two runs, one earned so far. The runners on the corner is his responsibility. A walk and three strikeouts. Now, somehow, Greenfield's got to keep that tying run or the go-ahead run from scoring at third, keep this thing tied headed to the bottom of the ninth where the Paladins have 8, 9, and 1. Hebner, Crawford, and Richards do up. Lefty versus left-handed batter, Cullen Smith. Greenfield's first pitch to him. He bunts back to the mound. Here comes the runner to the plate. He is out. Greenfield fielded it with the glove and flipped it out of the glove to the plate. Whitehead blocking the plate, put the tag on him. And the attempted suicide fails. One, two on the out at the plate, two down. Smith, a fielder's choice. Not out of the woods yet, though. The Tying run at second base now with two down. I'll be honest with you. I'd like to see a replay of that. I think he might have gotten a hand in. We might have gotten a big of a break, a big break there. All right, let's see if Greenfield can get another left-handed hitter, Blake Rowlett out. Go ahead, run at second. And there's a breaking ball, high and away, ball one. Rowlett, one for four, he doubled his last time up. Eight, eight the score as we play here in the top of the ninth inning. 
ETSU has tied it. Tried to get the go-ahead run home with a squeeze. It failed. First and second, two down. And Greenfield will bluff back to second base. Outfield just about straight away. Overton a couple of steps toward right center. The 1-0 pitch. Low and away. Two balls and no strikes. Got Beeler. Due up next. He pinch hit in the last inning and struck out. Stayed in the game to play left field. Two balls and no strikes. Greenfield with the pause and the pitch. And it's high ball three. Three and oh. Second game of the doubleheader in Colowy is in a delay in the second inning with the Catamounts leading one nothing. Greensboro now up 11-4 at Ohio State in the top of the eighth. 3-0 pitch. And he swings at it and skies it in the left center field. Carter Grote circling it, makes the catch, and the inning is over. They turn him loose on 3-0, and Greenfield comes on and gets out of it, stranding the go-ahead run at third. We are off to the bottom of the ninth inning. Furman 8, ETSU 8. Back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. I was surprised recently when I learned that Americans spend $80 billion a year on illegal sports gambling. Sure, that's spread out over millions of gamblers, but still, it makes you wonder where that money's coming from. Unfortunately, too often, it's coming from money that was intended to buy groceries, pay the mortgage, or even put children through college. If gambling's had a negative impact on your life, call the SC Gambling Hotline toll-free at 877-452-5155. Help is confidential and available 24 hours a day. A message from the South Carolina Department of Alcohol and Other Drug Abuse Services. Palmetto Pride, South Carolina's anti-litter and beautification organization, would like you to do your part to help keep South Carolina beautiful. Don't litter. Report litter bugs and litter hotspots by calling the Litter Buster hotline at 1-877-7-LITTER or by using our Trash Tracker app. No one trashes South Carolina. No one trashes my state. Bottom of the ninth inning, new catcher. Replacing the pinch runner Cunningham is Jackson Greer. And Brandon Elmy is coming off the bench to pinch hit for Brett Hebner. Elmy did not start because of the Swollen left knee. If we had any sense of drama around here, we would have played the Rocky theme as he walked up. Peyton Taylor still out there. And his first pitch to Elmy is swung on in a little roller towards second base. Fielded by Rowland, he throws out Elmy. One pitch, one out. Third baseman, number seven, Jake Crawford. Paladins this year, so far, tied after eight innings, and that's where we are. 0-1 here in the ninth. After leading after eight, 15 and two. There's a line drive foul. Look out up on the veranda. Got the parents scattering up there. Jake Crawford, two for four. He's been on three times. Reached on an error his first time. RBI triple and a run scored in the sixth and a bunt base hit in the seventh. No balls and a strike. Pitch. And another foul ball right side. He's behind 0-2. Oh, 
Both corner infielders, Smith at third, Bailey at first, right on top of the lines. Jabari Richards on deck. Run wins it. No runs, we go to extra innings. No balls and two strikes to Crawford to pitch. And he hits it by the mound into center field, a base hit. Reach for a pitch off the plate outside, protecting it 0-2. And he rolled it right over the rubber and into center field. And that is the winning run. And here comes Jabari Richards. Right fielder number six, Jabari Richards. Jabari is one for four. He struck out swinging twice. He's drawn a walk. That won an RBI triple, a run scored. And you know that he would love to atone for his last time up. Runners at second and third, and the infield in with one out, and he struck out swinging. He has one walk-off home run in his career, and he bunts foul at the plate, trying to bunt for a base hit. Started to take a practice swing, and fortunately for the catcher, Jackson Greer, he held up because Greer had gone out in front of Jabari to pick up his helmet, which had come off. So no balls and a strike. Crawford, the winning run at first. Pitch outside. One ball and one strike to count. Richards looking for a pitch. He can hit hard. Find a gap, maybe. He laces one foul left side. He's behind one and two. Carter Grode on deck. Jabari walks away from the plate. Now comes back in. Taylor, a long look into his catcher, Greer, and now ready with the one-two pitch. Here it is. And he just missed outside. One and two, or two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Outfield straight away for the left-handed batter. Break-even pitch coming. And a ground ball backhanded by the first baseman, throws to second, get the force of Crawford. And that's all, nice play by Bailey moving off to his right. Three to six for the second out. Now Richards the lone runner at first. And here's Carter Grote who's three for four with an intentional walk. Let's see if Richards will be running here with two down. He's getting off to a good lead. So Taylor comes set. And he turns and throws that way, and Jabari's out. Picked him off, says Gary Keller. Jabari still on his knees, threw his hands toward the heavens. Thought he got back, but not in the opinion of Keller. And that's the inning, and we are headed to extra innings. 8-8 eight, eight to score. Back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. When it comes to commercial vehicles, break through the clutter with a new Sprinter Worker from Freightliner. Otherwise, your work van isn't getting it done. The Sprinter Worker carries over a ton and a half with over 300 cubic feet of space and all match safety. It starts at just $32,495 with a service interval of up to 20,000 miles. Huge capacity starting at just $32,495. From Christopher Trucks, Whitehorse at I-85, ChristopherTrucks.com. 
Spirit Communications, built for your business and the upstate's choice for voice, data, internet, and fiber services. Let us show you the future with our cutting-edge, unified cloud-based products backed with live 24-7 customer support. Call 517-1200 or click spiritcom.com. Spirit Communications is a proud sponsor of Furman Athletics. Spirit Communications, keeping you connected. I'm going to go to the 10th in an 8-8 ball game. New shortstop for the Paladins is Dylan Love. He replaces the pinch hitter Brandon Elmy. Billy Greenfield will stay out there. Brock Beeler is due to lead off the inning, but I think we're going to have a pinch hitter as Tony Scholes out talking to home plate umpire Gary Swanson. If the Paladins end up falling short in this one, they're going to look back at several opportunities they had to put some distance between themselves and the Bucks. Hopefully it won't come to that. Looks like Cade Gilbert is going to pinch hit for Brock Beeler. So Gilbert, Parker, and then the leadoff hitter Cook against Greenfield in the first pitch to the right-handed batter. It's on the outside corner of strike. Gilbert, a freshman. And on the season, two for seven with an RBI. The 0 1 lays off a pitch outside, one ball and one strike. Paladins one and three in extra innings. They got their first win last weekend in the middle game against Western Carolina. Rayfield misses high, two and one. Lefty winds and delivers. And a little looping line drive caught by Boswell at first one out. So the leadoff man gone. Now here's Hunter Parker, the center fielder, who's center fielder, 0 5, for Hunter 3 Parker. with a sacrifice money. Drove in a run with a fielder's choice ground out in the eighth inning. Left-handed batter. And the first pitch to him. Fouled off to the left, out of play. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. Way out in front of an off-speed breaking ball. No balls and two strikes. Billy Wines, his 0-2 pitch. Strike three called. Painted the outside corner with a fastball. Two down. Shortstop, number two, Chris Cook. And now here's Cook, the shortstop. Done a lot of damage tonight. Three for five, two doubles, a two-run homer. Has scored twice. Last time up, Hawkins got him to roll out to second base with the tying run at that time in scoring position. First pitch misses, ball one. Breaking ball on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Looking ahead to the Furman 10th, it's Grote, Costa, and Overton. Two, three, and four in the lineup. One, one pitch. 
And a fly ball down the right field line. Anybody going to get there? No, it's foul. And that triangle converging again of Richards coming in, Boswell going out, and Griffith heading toward the middle of both of them. And none of them get there. It's one and two. So trying to set them down in order and ahead of an awfully tough customer here, a ball and two strikes. Everybody back, the one two pitch, and he got it. Strike three called on the inside corner. Back to back punch outs for Greenfield, and the inning is over. He got him in order. Three up and three down. Bottom of the tenth. Let's get a run and go to the house. Eight eight the score. Back after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. There's a reason why year after year more people trust Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, see Dan Joyner Realtors, to get the job done. It's because we deliver the highest level of real estate services with the utmost integrity, quality, and professionalism. We love what we do, and it shows in every transaction. We've been the undisputed upstate market leader for over 20 years because we do what's right, we handle every transaction with a smile, and we're committed to making your home journey the best it can be. For your best move ever, contact Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. See Dan Joyner Realtors today. Visit cdanjoyner.com and let's get started. Hey, go ahead. Moving to the pitcher is number two, Chris Cook. Going into the left field, the former designated hitter number 21, Caleb Longley. Designated hitter position is now. Is eliminated and now catch him in sophomore 37, Doug Wholesale changes for ETSU as we move to the bottom of the 10th inning. First and foremost, coming in from shortstop to pitch is Chris Cook. Caleb Longley, the DH, goes into left field. Kate Gilbert, who pinch hit in the last inning, stays in the game. He goes to short, and a new catcher is Doug McFarland. So the DH is off. McFarland is in the game in the three hole, replacing Jackson Greer. And Cook comes on, making his fifth appearance of the year. No record, a 180 earned run average, and has two saves. Five innings, four hits a run, earned, four walks, three strikeouts. Peyton Taylor. Goes two innings. Allows two hits, no runs, and didn't walk or strike out anybody. So now it's Cook and it's Grote. Three for four with an intentional walk. Two RBIs in the game. Cook will work from the windup. And his first pitch. Up and in, ball one. Bottom of the 10th, tied 8-8. Eight, eight. Cooks 1-0. Again, high and inside, two balls and no strikes. Grote, Costa, and Overton. Anybody gets on, Whitehead. A run wins it. The 2-0 pitch. Breaking ball drops in for a strike. 
two and one to count. Carter steps out, now back in. Again, the corner infielder is right on top of the lines, playing deep. 2-1 pitch, and a ground ball up the middle into center field, a base hit. Carter Grote, the second Paladin tonight with a four-hit game. That's his first four-hit game of the season. His multi-hit game total now at 15 ties him for the club lead with Elmy. And that ties a career high the fourth time that Grote has had four hits in a game. Now Costa, 0 for 4 with a walk, looking for his first hit. Let's see if they'll ask him to bunt. And he's squaring. And he pushes a breaking ball at the first baseline, and they let it roll foul. So no balls and a strike. Situation up in Colowee in the middle innings of the first game when the Palms were down 2 nothing or a 2-1 rather with two on and nobody out. Harker thought about having Costa bunt, let him swing away and he had a three-run homer. Squaring here and he pushes it back uh, close enough to the first baseline to get the job done. Thought for a moment that the pitcher might have a play at second base, but he didn't. So 1-3 on the out, winning run at second. Here's Sky Overton, who has singled in each of his last four trips. A base hit now with any distance to it would win it, and it would give Sky a career-high five-hit game. And it looks like they're going to put him on. They are. I'm going to put him on and face Whitehead with first base open. Here's ball two. Tell you what, that thing almost drifted back over the plate. Cook with ball three. And here comes ball four. That one almost came back over the plate. So what that does, it sets up a double play possibility. And now Whitehead, one for four with a sacrifice bun, and that one, a two-run home run in the fifth inning. All it takes now is a base hit practically anywhere to the outfield. You've got good speed in Grote at second base, and he turns on one and rifles it foul. Way foul down the left field line and out of play. A loud strike for Whitehead. Now Smith moves off the line a little bit at third. The 0-1 pitch, breaking ball, and it drops in for a strike. And some confusion there between Cook and Greer, the catcher. Greer was obviously expecting something else. He basically just stabbed at that breaking ball, and it was in the strike zone. And Whitehead's behind 0-2, but he jogs out to talk to his pitcher. Sims Griffith on deck. Paladins need a, a base hit here with runners at first and second and one out. And a tie ball game in the 10th. Oh, not Greer, but Doug McFarland. I didn't scratch Greer's name out enough. Just running out of room everywhere on my scorebook. All right, meeting over the 0-2 pitch. High with a fastball. One ball and two strikes. 
Grote at second, Overton at first, but the only one that matters is Carter Grote. Cook glances that way, the one, two, and a strikeout swinging on a breaking ball. So now Griffith, one for five with a double and scored a run. That was in the seventh. It's the last run the Paladins have put on the board. So Sims will have a chance to wear the Laurel Hero. First pitch from Cook. Breaking ball drops in for a strike. He's got an awfully good hook. Walks back behind the rubber for a minute, now back up on top. Griffith waiting. And now the 0-1. Swing and a miss at another breaking ball, and Sims, like Whitehead, in a deep, deep hole at no balls and two strikes. He walks away from the plate, takes a practice swing. Now settles back in. Cook leans in for the sign, straightens up, and his 0-2 pitch. And a line drive into left field that'll drop for a hit. Here comes Grote around third. The throw's off target, and the Paladins win it. Sims Griffith delivers the game winner. They are chasing him out into short center field, and they're going to beat him to a mortal pulp. The Paladins, a two-out game-winning single from Sims Griffith, win it in the bottom of the 10th inning by a final score of 9-8. to eight. Holy Toledo. We'll be back to run you through the final numbers after this on the Furman IMG Sports Network. If you've been sidelined by an injury, the St. Francis Sports Medicine team is here 24-7 to get you back on the field. Our highly trained network of physicians, athletic trainers, and physical therapists treat all types of sports-related injuries, even those that don't occur from playing a sport. Call the St. Francis Hurt Line at 675-HURT for priority appointments or at-home advice. Again, that's 675-HURT. There's a reason why year after year more people trust Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, see Dan Joyner Realtors to get the job done. It's because we deliver the highest level of real estate services with the utmost integrity, quality, and professionalism. We love what we do, and it shows in every transaction. We've been the undisputed upstate market leader for over 20 years because we do what's right, we handle every transaction with a smile, and we're committed to making your home journey the best it can be. For your best move ever, contact Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. See Dan Joyner Realtors today. Visit cdanjoyner.com and let's get started. You can party hardy at your next Paladin Tailgate Extravaganza with ABC Party Rentals and Amusements. ABC can set you up with tents, chairs, tables, even firm and table linens to let everyone know your blood runneth purple. How about some inflatables or mechanical rides for the kids to really make it special? ABC Party Rentals is conveniently located near Woodruff Road and I-385. When you tailgate at a firm and football game, do it right with ABC Party Rentals and Amusements. Don't wait. Check them out now at ABC Green. Dan Scott here to tell you that I have found my breakfast place in the Traveler's Rest area, The Hungry Drover. Located at the intersection of Tigerville Road and Highway 290, The Hungry Drover features local eggs, raw milk, homemade breads, and of course their famous gigantic omelets. If it's lunch you crave, check out the barbecue, tomato pie, and the made-from-scratch desserts, and don't forget dinner on Friday nights. Find the full menu and operating hours at HungryDrover.com and like them on Facebook. For catering, call John at 864-901-5040 and enjoy the farm-fresh eating experience in the heart of Traveler's Rest that is the Hungry Drover. Well, in a game full of missed opportunities, stranded base runners, and all sorts of crazy things that happen, the only thing that will be remembered for the record is Sims Griffith's two-out 
game-winning base hit on an 0-2 pitch to score Carter Grode in the bottom of the 10th inning. And the Paladins win it 9-8. They extend their overall winning streak to five. They have won their fourth consecutive conference game. And with the win, move into sixth place in the league ahead of VMI who lost today and have one more win than Samford who was losing at last check. Anyway. Final numbers. For the Paladins, nine runs, 16 hits, one error, and 11 stranded. For ETSU, eight runs, 14 hits, four errors, and they left eight. Greenfield, the winner in relief. He retired all five batters he faced. He's one and one on the year. Cook suffered his first loss in his only decision so far. No save. And the game took three hours and 19 minutes to play before an announced crowd of 374 here at Latham Stadium. So with the win, Furman now 16 and 20, and they improved to 5 and 8 in the league. ETSU is 19 and 16 overall. They fall to 2 and 8 in conference play. Tomorrow, it's doubleheader action here at Latham Stadium because of the pending rain on Saturday. Will Gaddis will get the ball in game one for the Paladins, and he's scheduled to be opposed by Blake Smith, a right-hander for ETSU in game two. It'll be Matthew Quarles going against left-hander Jamin McCann. First game starts at 1 o'clock. We will be on the air at 1245 with the pregame show. Thank you for hanging with us. It was well worth it in dramatic fashion. The Paladins win it here this evening by a final score Hello. of 9-8. to eight. For all of us here with Furman Baseball, I'm Dan Scott saying God bless you and so long, everybody. This is the Furman IMG Sports Network. You're from Colorado. Come on. Um, are you guys still going? Yeah, we're waiting for you. Change of plans. I might have to ditch. Uh, I don't know. We just went on a walk off. Uh, oh. Okay. Um, I'll make it up to you. Yeah, I want, I want Krispy Kreme. Well, we can bring you back a You're not going to bring me back, though. Don't worry about it. You can have it. Thank you. Bye. See ya.